part of the meeting have been public comments. We have one gentleman from the public who is well known. Hi. Do you have comment today? No comment. Thank no you. No comment today. And you are taping for the North Street Association. That's right. So it will be up on their website. We thank North Street for uh, continuing to provide this service for the citizens of Northampton. Uh, is there any other public comment at this point in time? Hearing none, moving forward, the executive branch is number two on the list. This, as you can see, number two, number three, and number five or the last of the three large areas that we were going to review. Uh, they're slated to be on the December 6th, next Tuesday's forum for discussion and input by the public. Uh, that forum will be at City Hall. The time on that is 6 to 8 o'clock, 6 to 9 o'clock, uh, which is different. It's a half hour earlier than last time, just to make sure we're all aware of that. Um, refresh my memory from the executive, the citizens relief, and the other one is who is taking leads in all these, just so I remember. Who do we volunteer? Mark, you have, which one? The, um, hang on. <laughs> I have the temporary absence of the mayor. Nomination election procedures. Okay. I have the local access, uh, access to local government. The three position initiative positions. Okay, great. So if you have specific things that you'd like background or information on with our Steve here, please ask and we can share that. But let's move right into the executive branch and find out those areas that we are unsure of or would like to gather more information on. And I'll turn it over to Steve to walk us through that section of the Okay, we, um, we left off, I guess, on 3-5. Yep. Um, 3-5 is just kind of a bureaucratic procedure that the mayor can actually call meetings in council if, um, if there's a, an, an issue that um, um, uh, the mayor needs to present to them. Um, now, is also, that different when they're sharing the city council versus when they're not sharing the city council? Well, that's, I guess that's an interesting question. Um, I think either way, the mayor should have the authority to call meetings. I don't think I don't know if the mayor is the chair of the of, of the council right now to call a meeting in that in that in, 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 in the ability to call it a meeting that's because of the virtue of the mayor sitting there. I don't know that to answer that question. Mm -hmm. But I would leave it in this in the executive sec the section anyway. Um, and then we can, we can figure out what, the, what if the mayor has ever called a special meeting. In the capacity chair of the council, I don't know. Um, but either way, I think we should leave it in here anyway. Um, and um, section 35A is just that the mayor can, from time to time, to update the city council on, on, on the condition of the city. 3.6 um, is standard veto language. Um, the mayor can veto a, uh, a, a measure by the council. Um, there's some deadlines here, uh, and the override is two thirds of the full council. It's pretty standard to override the end of um, Temporary absence. Um, this this is uh, in, it, this temporary absence is more short term. Not it's not a big it's not an office here. If you leave and go to Brazil or something, you're out of the country, or you have a flu and you're, you're, you're sick for a week or something, and you can't come to work. This will allow. Okay, I've got a couple questions. Okay. Um, what if the city council president can't take over the role as acting or as mayor? Who, who takes over next? Um, I think I have. But there is someone in line. Um, is there text in here somewhere about a vice? President of the council. Yeah, that was what came up, I believe, in the last It time. came up and came up in the vacancy clause, okay. in the vacancy provision. Um, we could put a provision in here that the president or some other member of the city designated by the city council. So we don't have any problem with maybe the mission and sir. Okay. okay. Yep. Okay. The other thing that I had a concern about was compensation, which we kind of touched on a little bit. If the mayor is going to be gone, let's say having surgery, it's going to be out for like two months. Is their compensation available for that person because that's basically giving up your job to do a job for a couple months or do they take that role assuming that they're not going to be paid regardless I, I i've never seen a provision where there was any extras for the month it's 
like I'm working out a great. Okay. Um, I've never I've never seen that. And now with technology the way it is, I, mean, I can understand. So we was having uh, some surgery, and it's going to be at uh, you know Brigham Women's, and they're going to be in Boston or whatever. Um, that you know there could be some some issues, but you know you can bring stuff to me at a sign. This email, this technology today, you know. So they would make it more. It would be and just filling in basically like the like it says here in the article. Yeah. And okay. it's, it's just meant for short term. Right? Okay. And it's, and yeah. Again, it's, it's the short term absence is not the resignation of leaving the post. Yes. Yeah. I have a question, just just um, please. I apologize for not having been there uh, when you started this, but what is the purpose of going through this? Is this something that we're looking at as uh, the proposed charter? Yes. Okay. So if I have concerns about some of the language, now's the time to raise it. Yes. Okay. I do, so I'll let you finish. And I'll go back to okay. to what my concerns are. Okay. Um. This is a blanket delegation of authority by the mayor. The, the, the main delegate, the authority, the authority, the authority, the authority can't delegate is um, if the mayor's on the school committee, you know, he or she cannot send something to the mayor's to vote on the school committee. That's pretty much section three. Um, the vacancy, I mean, the vacancy is going to be difficult to, 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 um, to go through um, unless we decide a two or four year term. Um, but, the, but the time frames are about the same. You just put them in half. Um, so if you, if you have not Yeah, uh, no, I just was just one, because if, if we all decide, suppose that it's going to be a president and vice president of the council, that'd be easy to just go one to the other. It would, if the president this is, this is very important. Way. This is more important in this section. Yes. This yeah. Yeah. Yes. So oh, I see what you're saying. Um, so they're going to have to serve at least, maybe not full time, because you know, it's, 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 uh, you're going to have an election. Although, if, if it's a four-year term, the way it's determined here, if the vacancy is in the last two years, you don't have an election. That's a long time. I mean, we, can, we, can, we can tweak that. But that's expecting somebody to serve as mayor for two years that wasn't elected mayor. I just one other question as far as, like, when the acting mayor, um, it says the acting mayor cannot vote on anything in the city council while they, it's, well, that would make it eight. Who, who would be the tiebreaker? I mean, is there, there could, there could be something there that would be four to four. I think that's just an anomaly you'll have to live with. Okay, no, no way you can mm -hmm. prevent or. That's why it's good for these. Because the mayor's a 10th member. Okay. Yeah, 10th member. And uh, so when I talked to Claire, I mean, she said there was never a tie vote in the school committee ever in her experience. So, um, and I'm still, I still don't like even numbers. If they're permanent, on um, the school committee, the even number is permanent. This is not permanent. Yeah. You know? I mean, so we we had, and we, we we discussed that in a little bit in the school committee section, but didn't come to any decisions about how to deal with that. Um, Tom, next, and then Gail. Okay, I have. I'll go. Want to go through each of my comments? Yes. In uh, three point six, uh, three six, at the very beginning, we talked about the measure being presented to the mayor. Uh, is there? When I read it, what constitutes presentation of the measure during the delivery to the office, et cetera. So question whether or not we should have some definition uh, there. In the 3-7, uh, the absence of the mayor, uh, the question in my mind was, well, what is considered an absence? What's the duration? Is it short term, long term? If it goes beyond, if it's a relatively short term or relatively long term? Uh, should we have a provision that says that the city council will determine whether the mayor is absent? So just, uh, how do you determine what absence means? I mean, is a trip uh, to Brazil or something for 10 days, is that absence or or not? That type of thing. And Tom, just on that, is it is it time life that is motivating you or Capacity too, okay. either, either way. So we need to have specific language written in there. Do you have anything that you would begin to to postulate on that? And I mean, no, I did yet. not develop anything specific. But I, uh, the the, con the the concepts that came to mind was uh, primarily duration in terms of how long is the mayor um, not available, and what constitutes unavailability. So, 
and I'm, I'm happy to, to look at that and maybe come back with some. I, I think in, in 37A, I mean, the kind of the operable thing here is it's unable to perform the duties of the office. You can perform the duties of the office if you're in the yeah. I agree with you 100%. Yeah. It's not the distance. Yeah. It's availability. It's, 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 it's either incapacity or unavailability. I mean, if you're in the Amazon and you don't have the ability to do it, that's right. maybe a different story. But you're saying that that should be defined in the charter capacity. I'm, we I'm should nervous e about that. Yeah, I'm, I'm I, I, I would be more inclined for if the mayor is unavailable for a specific duration of time or if there's a question as to whether or not the mayor is unavailable, then perhaps having the council make a determination upon a request of council members. Um, that is a possibility. Does that exist in other charters? I haven't, you know, this is kind of, it's come up in discussions every time we, we every group I, I talk to, and it's, it's kind of, it's a difficult thing to kind of figure out, I mean, who's going to, who's determined what a disability is? I mean, does the mayor have to like, get a doctor's note to say, I'm just, you know, I'm unable to perform? So, um, you know, I understand that you want to close any ambiguity here, but it becomes, it's, it's hard to do it. Oh. Because, you know, yeah. incapacities. Yeah, the problem is for incapacities that the mayor doesn't accept as a right. capacity. Right. It's, you know, when the mayor says, I'm going to have an operation, that's obvious. When the mayor says, I'm going to be on a trip where I'm not going to be available on right. cell phone, that's obvious. But when it's something murkier, that's where the problem is. And that's why, that's why it's hard to, it's hard to find, because if the mayor, if the mayor has some capacity that's mental, right. or because of an addiction or something, mm -hmm. then, you know, you know, what it would be, you know, and, that's, and that, that has happened. But I mean, but it's, it's, I mean, I mean we, we, we touched on this last on the last year. meeting, um, and since if there, I mean, the worst case scenario, I don't know if you brought this up before, this, the city council is essentially trying to some sort of coup. We say, you're incapacitated, you're mentally incapable of doing this job, what are you talking about? I'm just fine. Um, in that absolute worst case scenario, the worst case thing is that it ends up in a special election at 90 days, right? And the, the voters figure it out. Well, no, because there's no vacancy in office. Well, the city council is asserting that there is, and that city council president takes over, or asserts that they're taking over, and you have sort of a constitutional crisis. You do. Um, and then, then, then you get a judge involved. Well, but, you know, <laughs> but, forcing, but forcing an election is, is a pretty drastic step because of the cost of, of uh, having an election. So you would have to have a council that was uh, seriously concerned about what was going on in the executive. Well, so, yeah, and I think if this if this were to happen, and, and it probably will never happen, I've never seen it happen, that that's, the mayor's going to get a lawyer, and the council's going to get, and then, gonna get, then they're going to go to court and some judge is going to figure it out. Yeah, but then you're going to talk a uh, protracted period of time, and if there is truly a problem with the mayor, uh, you have a city functioning without an executive. I'm not sure. I'm not sure we can define it. Like, I, okay. I'm not sure. I, I, no, I agree. I'm, I, I'm not saying that it's easy. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm looking, my job is to. I am trained saying, to look at problems. And, and again, yeah, yeah. this, this portion of our review is to raise all those red flags. Where do we think there could be concerns and issues? And it's time for people to take this as a little bit of homework. And how would you yeah. submit writing? Tom in here. I, I would be happy to try yeah. to draft something. I, I did draft something, uh, which I thought when I got to the end of this, which I'll, is my next comment. Yeah. So, uh, I will. I'll take a stab at it. And if anybody has any thoughts, I know I'll, I'll send it out. And so can we get into the the, vet, the vetting and yeah. the, also the approval process, the consensus process? Hopefully, then we can see if we want to adopt that language in there. But again, we're red flagging yep. stuff that we think could be problematic. Gail, did you finish on what you needed to yeah, say? I mean, it was the same concerns okay. that Tom's raising, yeah. and it was sort of like who decides and what process, yeah. what process is in the middle I yeah, ask a quick question. Um, with regard to the temporary absence, we had a hurricane, a freak snowstorm. Would this cover the event if the mayor was out of the country, couldn't get back, and we needed someone to step up as an executive? This clause would kick in yes. in, that, in that sort of situation. Yes. Okay, so yes. it covers that as yes. well. Yes. 
And would that be a voluntary abdication by the mayor? Well, that would be... That would who be, makes the determination? Because the mayor, if, you can't, if the mayor is, you know, uh, if there's a hurricane or something, and the mayor is, uh, you know, in, in, in the Caribbean, and the hurricane strikes and there's no communication, then obviously someone's going to make the determination. The mayor, if we need a temporary mayor because we, we can't, we are a community panel. Can't, can't communicate. And that's my question. Who makes that determination? The council has to make it. Okay, so that, but, so maybe, okay, I'll, I'll put some language okay. to it. Okay. The, the last thing that I had was the last sentence under C. I read it, and I had to read it several times to page uh, 7. All three, oh, three, three step with which section? Well, it's uh, 39C. 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 Okay. okay. trying to say is that if uh, if somebody if the city uh, president city council takes over uh, and there's going to be an interim election before the next election of the mayor then you're going to have an election for the mayor okay is, is that okay if, if it's clear to other people that's fine if I did draft some languages which I thought made a little bit uh, at least to me made it more clear so I'm happy to Circulate. So what would happen under this if, if um, uh, Nakowitz was, was elected, he would be sworn in in November rather than have to wait to January. So yes. The, yes. So, so with the special election, the yes. swearing in happens immediately. Right away. Okay. Yeah. Why wait? You know. Sorry. Okay. Let me digest this. Yeah. That's okay. what. All right. I just threw it out. Okay. It, to me, I. I it seemed like it was. Uh, Subject to interpretation. Okay. All right. Other in that particular temporary absence, delegation of authority to the mayor, and vacancy of the mayor. Any other red flags or concerns that people? Seven. Yeah. Well, I thought we were on the way up to. And I'm going to just let me throw this out there. Is 3 7 really something you have to deliberate in the public hearing for? You know, so it's certainly not. I kind of went through it. I the public notice how it's right. Okay. I went through, I'll be honest with you, I got. I took some notes and stuff, and, and uh, there's not a lot of meat on the bone here to. Right. Well, I will just go right back again. I think people won't want to comment on that. Probably, just, probably not. Yeah. But Ken, there was a lot of discussion in the last two years about absences. We've had the last mayor was absent for two different types. One when she had her surgery, one when she um, left office for her other job. And that became the discussion. So I think that there'll be lots of people with opinions. Now the point is making sure that those opinions get recorded so they fall within the correct area of, of this discussion. So I just I want to make sure people are aware of that. And there's really nothing you can do about it. No, no there's, and again, if you have the surgery, if you want to resign, you can resign. <laughs> <laughs> no, the way things are done. But I think that there, needs, there could be a lot of additional feedback in that area that we need to be respectful of. Do, do charters ever refer to areas of the general laws that are available procedurally for making decisions like about in the capacity? You know, 
there are other laws that cover how non-mayors are determined to be incapacitated. Does it is it a problem to refer it to? I don't I don't know if any other laws that determine what incapacity is. Well <coughs> I mean I bet you uh, when it says if it says it in the constitution or it says it in the statutes about the governor. It's not going to, uh, you know, when the governor's going to get incapacitated, I don't think there's any definition in there with what incapacity is. I mean, every case has to be handled as it comes out. You're thinking but, but more I, of like a section question, nine or something. Yeah, yeah. something like that. So, yeah. Is there any history anywhere that tells us how a municipality went about dealing with that if it came up? I've never, I've never seen the incapacity issue come up with a that we've had, that, that I, to my knowledge, we put, you know, to my knowledge. You mean you've never the, seen a mayor resist the opinion of other people that he or she was incapacitated? Because I thought you said that with substance abuse and stuff that, that you have seen that. There was an issue in the municipality um, where there was a substance abuse issue and they just write, they wrote it out until the term was over and, and, and then they never that's how they dealt with it. So there was no... Two okay. there was so no, there was no attempt to place that person... Correct. ...to the side. Correct. Very, you know, obviously... They managed delicate. it like a family, basically. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess there'll also be an option for a recall, too. We'll get to that. But that's if true. it's particularly egregious, they'll... Mm -hmm. there are other, There's a, that, yeah, that's a good point. Okay. The recall takes a little while, but it's still there. Mm -hmm. That is a mechanism to oust someone. Yeah. Right. Yes. Any other concerns or questions on the executive branch? Moving forward on the administration of organizational financial procedures. This is sort of boilerplate stuff, but if you have any more comments on this, I just wanted to, to make it clear that uh, if there's a reorganization plan of any departments in the city, it has to emanate from the executive. It cannot emanate from the legislative body. And the, leg and the executive it, it can submit reorganization plans. The legislative body, will, it's up or down vote, but they can't amend it. That just, that just says, listen, the mayor is the executive. The mayor has the ability to, to structure the departments under the mayor. The city council shouldn't, shouldn't you know, Obviously, the mayor's going to have, hopefully have the votes before he submits something, but the, the city council cannot amend it, or, or they can't, or the city council can't create an ordinance all of a sudden that says the Department of Public Works will be combined, will be combined with the planning department. That's, that's, that's the mayor's prerogative, not the council's prerogative. So, that's what this is. A lot of city councils don't like this, but um, this is the way it, this is the way it is. They shouldn't be dabbling with, with real organizing departments. Mm -hmm. Not that I don't get them. So that's that's the point I'm making. That's the only points I make on this on, on section five one. Okay. Uh, is, that, is that different from what the charter does now? I don't. Um, I think the charter. The charter well, if, if you look at the charter now, I mean, there's a bunch of stuff in here. If you see the fire chief, you know, there's a bunch of stuff in here that organizes departments and the ordinances. Well, this changes that. You're not going to have organization of city agencies in the ordinances anymore. It's all going to be an administrative call. Mm -hmm. So it is different from what's done now. Is that, are you comfortable with that, Mark? You no, I, I think that should be the policy as a sensible one, this new one. But I'm, uh, I'm just trying to get a sense of what, how much does it represent a change from what we have now? Is it something that could be lightning run? Uh, on, on, on that issue, um, Mary Ford raised at our public hearing that she su su suggested that we go back and look at all the ordinances as we do this. I, I didn't quite understand where she was coming from. Is that because a lot of the, uh, these rules currently reside with the ordinances and we're talking about removing them from? Yeah, if this, if this charter passes, your ordinances are going to be a completely different um, document completely different. And it's going to, in the provisions, and the transition provisions, which we haven't seen yet, um, there'll be some language in it that says within 190 days, uh, the mayor shall appoint a committee um, that will make sure that ordinances are in compliance with the new charter. 
So that's when the ordinance review takes place. And that's when all the stuff that, that's administrative in nature comes out of the ordinances and is put in a code. Now, the first time this is done, the mayor's going to submit a huge document that says this is the administrative code for the city. And then from there on, you know, you might amend it once every five years. I mean, it doesn't happen all the time. But this is a major, a major job that has to get done because even, even without this provision, there's going to be stuff in here that's not in compliance with all the ordinances as they are now. So someone has to do that review. Mm -hmm. So what should be in the charter should be in the charter, what should be in the code should be in the code, what should be in the ordinances. And this process is clearing that and delineating that in the best practice method. That's correct. Okay. Everybody understand all that? Yeah. All right. Other issues in, uh, do you want to get the second bullet? I mean, that's another boilerplate as far as I'm concerned. The bit of budget stuff, unless somebody has some questions, this is all pretty much statutory. It's just, it's just, you know, it's just you know, that's what people want. Gives people a timeline and understanding of how to handle that. One of the things that this has done, that this does, that's um, a little bit different than what happens now, is the school committee, the superintendent, the mayor, and the council have to meet before the budget process starts. Right now, I think they meet after the budget process starts, which is kind of like, why do it? Right. Um, so this makes this makes that change, and because the mayor's going to have five-year financial projections now and a five-year capital plan, you'll have actually something to to look to, look, to to look at to say here's the fiscal condition of the city. Everybody, whether everybody believes in it or not, believes on the same page or not, at least everybody has the same information. Beginning talking point, right? So again, it provides the structure that's necessary to have a conversation. Other questions or issues around this this area. Again, I think it was fairly standard. Now, in the interim, Chief Duggan had communicated with me his concerns and was this uh, the vehicle that should be taken? You all received a copy of the, the memo. Um, Mary, yeah, thanks. Um, Mary circulated it to everybody. Do you would you like to comment on the, the, the top of all this? I have a comment from our city clerk on this, but do you have a comment on this? I don't think any of this is appropriate for this. For the charter, for the charter, it should be in the code. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, it's just to make sure I understand where he's coming from. But this is not, and that was uh, also the opinion of Wendy uh, Maza, our city clerk, was that this was not charter-related issues. Does anybody have anything else they'd like to say to that? Any concerns or any issues that they have? This will all be addressed, yes. but it won't be addressed here. It will be addressed in the code. It will be addressed in the code once the charter passes, if it passes. Has the chief been... I have not said anything to the chief, chief until you and I met, we all met. Yeah. So if that is the determination of this group, then what I would send him is a letter saying, um, as we have been moving forward in the charter, we're working on the charter issues, this is a code issue, please pay attention and participate in the code discussion. There'll be another opportunity, and we'll work on the language of that and get the letter off. And just giving this, I mean, he's, pretty, he's probably right about cleaning this up, but this yeah. is not the whole Oh, he's not the right did this. Yeah. Again, <laughs> there was, a, there was a, a whole purpose of why this was done, why it was examined, but it's not a charter issue, right. it's a code issue. Right. So he's ahead of the game, that's all. Right. You know, and he just has to wait his turn, and then there'll be an opportunity for him to change the code <coughs> to work on this. Are we all set on that? Any other questions or issues about that particular piece? All right. Number five, election and citizens relief mechanisms. Okay. Um, elections are heavily regulated by the state, but you have to have some stuff in order to try so people can generally know, you know how, 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 how it works. Um, the one under the elections section, I think the one major decision that needs to get made, or there could be others, um, is whether to keep preliminary elections or not. A lot of cities have kind of gotten rid of the preliminary because there's not enough candidates, number one, and they're expensive. On the other hand, I, I think people are so used to having them that it could be a major disruption to get rid of them. Some people, some, some cities have kept prelims for only for mayor and not for the city council. Um, I think that the, the mayors especially, I think, like preliminary elections because they can see, you know, where to concentrate on their, to, 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 to their, their vote they, uh, because they, know they, have a, they have a couple of months to, to see how the, the 
as elsewhere. But how many how many ward elections are contested? I mean, how many ward elections have more than two um, uh, candidates? I don't know. So you can end up having a prelim just for one ward. And you know, what's the turnout and all that stuff, and what's the expense? But I mean, I, I don't you know. I have I, I have no strong feelings either way. But I've seen special acts passed that will get rid of a prelim in the, in the city just for that year because they don't want to, they didn't want to go through it. So, Bill? Uh, just as far as recent history here, we didn't have any prelims this year. Um, and the prelims that we've had more recently have always been, you know, one gadfly getting in that no ever knows is not going to win and make it a irritant for everybody. So. There isn't, there hasn't been like a, a great love of a, or a truly classic contested preliminary that everyone felt really invested in. So I wouldn't think it would be a tripwire um, in this instance, although, again, what do I know? Um, I do wonder, though, if uh, it's worth having a discussion about like it's, it's a runoff voting or if any other cities in Massachusetts have adopted it's a runoff voting. Um, I don't know. I, I, I know there's going to be a constituency in town that, that likes it, likes the concept of it. I don't know if it would be widely shared across the city or, or if, if doing a big change like that might end up being more controversial, but I thought it's worth exploring. Yeah, and the way we, that, that issue came up in discussions when I was, um, when I was um, at, at uh, doing the, um, uh, the Somerville um, charter, because Cambridge has proportional representation. Um, although, whatever came, which has some old women dropped anyway. <laughs> they wanted to look at it anyway. Um, but, you know, the way we, the way we were going to deal with that, if people wanted to deal with it, was in the transition provisions of the Charter, you set up a whole other committee to look into that, because that's huge. And then there has to be a lot of public input, and, and, and so you, in, in, in the transition you say, you know, within 90 days, um, uh, X shall appoint, X amount of people to examine election pr pr procedures in the city of Northampton, including instant runoff voting. Mm -hmm. It's a whole separate process. Mm -hmm. but, and, and you can do that outside of this charter process. It's yes. Possible to do. yes. Yes. But you can mandate it in this charter. Right. 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 And, and this mandate charter examination. Would, this charter would also mandate that you would then, the city would accept the recommendation? No. 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 It would just so mandate no. a review of, uh, of whether the city. You know, make recommendations of, of, of you know, basically there's only this, this majority in this in this is instant runoff, mm -hmm. and if they, if this committee recommends instant runoff, then I think it goes it goes another special act needs to be voted on. I mean, so, there, so there's not a normal runoff where say you have three candidates, one wins 51 percent, they've got it clear, but it's 49 49 two. There's no provision then to have two weeks later or three weeks later a second or, or a Runoff between the two, two top vote getters. Right. Okay. And that's a statewide rule, or no? I mean, you can you can do Cambridge is the only city left with proportional representation. Okay. You know, before before it was you know uh, a technology. I mean, it would take them two or three weeks to figure out what the election results were. Um, but and, uh, you know, people really claim it's the it's it's the fairest form of election. Um, but um, you know, we had somebody in from Cambridge to explain it. And after you know forty-five minutes, and everybody's glazing over. <laughs> it's like, do you know? You understand what he said? <laughs> it's very tough to understand. I lived in Cambridge for eighteen years. Okay, all right. I, I like the system. Oh, yeah, yeah, people love it, but it's it's hard for people to really grasp it when they have ten minutes. Um, but it's a major shift, and we probably should be in a separate process on this one. Let me, let me just. So, how would that work when you've got an election for mayor? How would proportional representation? Influence the outcome. The Cambridge doesn't have a man. Um, or a council member, a ward, uh, you know. I can explain the council. Okay. If you have nine members in the council and you had 15 people running, then you take you you okay. take the 15th person, the last votes, and you just say, okay, that person is 15th. He's not going to be on the council. Take his second place votes, and now go and distribute that. And then, okay, now the second, now the next person, then you eliminate the 14th person. Because that person, now you add the second place votes to that, and all the other people who were left. And as you keep doing that, then, and then the other one too is when that person, and you keep going up until you're left only with nine people. Cool. So you don't get the nine top vote getters, but you keep, re, you keep redistributing the second place votes of the, the next group of people. I would think that would be up for mayor, too. I 
I mean, in San Francisco, they just switched their, their election process to that. Okay. They, the first mayor's race with that. Right. Okay. Right. I don't know what I mean. They had 16 people for one slot. They took off the bottom. I mean, yeah. you got to get a vote in a ranked order. Okay. I don't know how deep you had to go, but you had to get some sort of ranking. And, and, and the, so the, it, it is a higher cost because you have more to track. But the concept is if you get rid of the preliminary, you have that set of election dollars available. So, in the, for what it's worth. So, the proposal at this point in time is we'd need to take it on directly, but what I'm hearing from Steve is that we would put this to a study commission that would bring it up in a separate process because of its complicated manner that it is a major change to the charter and to the way Northampton has done business, and it should be done in a, um, its own, uh, it should be on its own track. Does that make sense? There's, a, there's an organized group in Commonwealth that are going around and, and, and pushing for this type of, and they, they, they certainly we're, 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 a, we're a lot of people in, in, in some of them that wanted to examine this thing. Um, but I think the statewide association is something that people who are pushing this type to try to get this type of voting system in Massachusetts municipalities generally. Um, but if they show up here in full force uh, in the next meeting, we'll see. But, you know, if, and no one's really pushing for it. Why do it? I don't know. Yeah. So, so, the, so now there's one remaining confusion for me. L let's say we take your advice and leave it for a later time. Will the charter need amendment again after that later time, or do we somehow write this? That, no, the, the, or, or do we completely? The special act is passed to change the voting law, so fix this and say the special act will say in section, you know. Um, of the, the charter of uh, uh, section six, whatever, blah, 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 shall be is, 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 is amended. So that would be one of the, as opposed to the major charter change, one of the minor charter changes that you put through the legislature, that would be the vehicle to be used. Yes. Okay. I have heard that people are interested in that. If we go in that direction, are we uh, asking for similar problems to what we have or currently with a 20-year-old charge that uh, it's been amended and changed by special acts for decades and that's what makes it so cumbersome. I mean, if, if it is an issue that is a serious issue, uh, I think we should at least consider it a little more than just uh, passing it off. I don't know if people are interested in that, but it, I, I thought, I, in my mind, the idea is that we should try and deal with as much as we possibly can anticipate in this that belongs in the Charter. So, my suggestion, we have a public hearing coming up on this, with this being a topic. We'll see how that plays out. And again, we're not making decisions at this point in time as to which direction, but we have two options. One, the concept, maybe to deal with it and incorporate it into the Charter. The second is to send it to the Study Commission who would then take their time and come back with with a proposal to the special charter, special act, whatever it is. Well, and the third option is just if there's a groundswell of support for this, let people do it on their own. Yeah. So it's out, yeah, it's a referendum. Right. So that's, that's another way of going in. So um, again, I want to move on, but if we're comfortable with that spot, who's running this, this part of it? Good luck, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> One further question, but there is an option to drop the preliminary elections altogether. You're saying a lot of towns have gotten rid of that just to save money. Oh, correct. Okay. And the downside to that, to dropping it? I think people like them. As a former elected official, I like the fact that you get elected with 51% of the vote. You know, I, I just think that that's important. Um, you know, when you, when you have somebody being elected with 24 candidates in the race and somebody getting elected with 26% of the vote, especially for something like mayor, that makes me concerned. But don't we, okay. Um, so, has that been an issue? Have there been so votes for mayor? Um, or right now, then, on that election, you only get two people. No, but in, in recent history, have, have we, has that been an issue for Northampton where you've had? Well, we've always had preliminaries. So they, we've preliminary. always waited and, and brought it down to two or four, which depending on the, the particular race. It's just, 
that piece of it, should the preliminary not, I would think would be dumped in with this. That if you go to this new form of voting, then you would need the preliminary. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, but I just, my personal concern has always been that, that you could have four people running for mayor. Um, and again, we can't look at personalities in the shorter time frame, but the larger time frame, as Gail was, was trying to point out the other day. What could happen if we have three or four people running for mayor, somebody could get elected with 25% of the vote, and is that a good thing or is that a, something that would be problematic? And my gut is, I just am nervous about that. But if you're redistributing the votes, the way Correct. Well, well, which, right. which is what I'm saying is that if, if it goes to this methodology, if, if we decide we want to go to that, that issue's resolved. That makes sense. Correct. However, if, if we don't go in that direction, you, Todd raised the question about should we tackle the preliminary and not preliminary, keeping status quo. My concern would be, again, we could get people elected with significantly under uh, a mandate, and that may be a problem. If you have no preliminary, and you have no runoff, and you have no instant runoff, right. Right. then you get a, a, a minority or plurality winner. Correct. So I, to me, I'd, I'd bundle that and either deal with it next after next Tuesday if we have to deal with it, or take option B, or propose option C, which is the referendum. So here's another question then. Is there any efficient way to write this up in a way that the populace can be um, sort of educated about this before the public meeting, before the open forum? Because if there's a groundswell for this, there might be a bigger groundswell if people really got it. Mm -hmm. And it's a hard thing to, to write down, but is there a way to, 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 to get it to people so that they could really think about it? And we could then better gauge how the citizens are, are thinking at that time of meeting? That goes back to Bill and our PR committee of one. Do you, want to, do you want to save that for the end of the meeting? Talk about yes. just PR outreach in general? Why don't we do that? Can I just say something about preliminary? elections. What I don't like about them is just I feel like a lot of conversation that we've had has been, you know, too bad that there aren't more contested races. And then this sort of attitude like, oh, Barado, there's five people in the contest, you know, and two of them are weird. You know, like that I have a problem with. I mean, I would rather have those people have their full campaign, you know, and then not be discouraged that way. So maybe that's something that going towards the stratification, um, you know, people can participate. Other comments in this area? And again, I repeat, good luck, Mark. <laughs> Well, is there, just to, before we finish up, is there a way to sort of phrase this or uh, frame it as an instant runoff, which I think makes sense for people, it's economical, um, as opposed to proportional representation? That that sounds odd That's so form. Confusing. Yeah, but it basically it is just an instant runoff. Yeah. You get your first vote, and then you put your second choice, and, and that's yeah. it. And I'm it sure saves that. money, it saves time. And, and then you don't get all or nothing with your vote. Just yeah. explain yeah. this yeah. in a simple way. You know, I'm sure I keep on Cambridge websites, I'm, I'm sure they have it. Like, um, <laughs> I, won't, I won't heard describes it as a runoff. I haven't heard it describes it as first representation. Okay. Yeah. So again, I think that's what they do in Europe, though, as well. So when we get on to number six, we'll, we'll tie all those loose ends together. But I want to move on to uh, deliberate and decide on the pre petition, initiative petition, referendum, and new call positions. Judge Crone, did you volunteer for this section? I did. Steve, do you want to pick up on any of it before Gail asked our best season questions? We're talking about Arclay. Excuse me? Arclay, yeah. Okay. No, that's right, whatever. Well, I mean, um, I, I reviewed it and, and started trying to get some stuff ready for the public meeting, you know. Um, and what is very obvious here is that there are a bunch of sub-issues under almost each one of these four options that would have to be decided if we made a charter change. And so I think we just have to, you know, what we do with time when you've got that much um, 
the details to talk about, but I think we have to go down them all, I, unless Steve tells us something different. No, that's why I was trying to hurry the agenda once we get to this part, because I think this is going to be okay. some of the discussion. So why don't you walk us through some of the stuff you found, Gail? Okay, well, it's just what everybody else has probably read. I mean, the free petition is an opportunity to, to bring to the city council or the school committee, either by an individual or by a group. Um, uh, an issue that a citizen wants to bring before either of those bodies. And the first question is, should we have the, the provision? Um, and Steve's comment was that very few charters include it. Um, and if so, how many signatures should are needed in order to present the petition? And he gave the range from 50 in Gloucester to 150 in Watertown. So, I mean, one question is, do you if you have the other um, provisions, do you need the free petition? Are, are these in any way duplicative? And well, the free petition, um, I mean, some could argue that if, if 50 people have called, have called the council, if they want something on the agenda, usually it gets on. Um, and, you know, it, this, this is a very activist community, and 100 signatures can be get button like that. Yeah. You don't want this thing to abuse and clutter the agenda of the council because somebody wants something on there and they get the hundred signatures. So I mean, you don't have to have it because there are, you're right. There are other mechanisms here. Or if you want to keep it, should it be five hundred signatures or two hundred or two hundred fifty? Mm -hmm. Just to, just so this doesn't make it so easy for people to just clutter things up. Yeah. Have you come across a um, some type of distinction among the issues that are, uh, require certain numbers for a petition? I mean, if you have something that is clearly related to the city, and there's a sense among the, the public that the council is looking out for its own or doesn't is doing something which is contrary to the public will with regard to some city matter, that would be what you'd want to have this type of referendum for. But if it's something like, look, we want to go and protest the war in Iraq, you know, which really may not otherwise show up in the city council because there's nothing to do with city business. Uh, is there something that you would could somehow distinguish those, get the subject matter as part of the charter? Well, I, I guess a free petition, we can put that the, uh, the petition has to be something that the city council actually has the power, the school can actually have the power to do. Right. But um, whereas the, where there has been some citizen-initiated decisions that, you know, or rulings that sought, you know, actions sought by the city council, that it, for example, the, the war in Iraq last year, getting the U.S. out of Iraq, uh, that was something that, that did come from a citizen initiative. Uh, you know, <coughs> and I, then the next step is, would the, is council obliged to actually uh, acknowledge every city, every public petition, citizen petition, or could it just say, okay, well, we'll thank you for the citizen petition and then just walk away and, and ignore it? I think they can ignore it. I, I think submit a citizen they petition. They can ignore it. <laughs> That's just the tell force of law for petition. But it's, it's still it so calls it for debate. It doesn't require them to take action on it. No. It does require them to debate it? It requires them to have a hearing on it. Okay. But it so doesn't require them to take any action. Again, we're, we're gathering information. We're not necessarily moving towards the decision. Gail, where, where are you on this in terms of what other information do you need to sort of come up? Um, a comparison, I think, between the free petition and the initiative. Because the, the free petition seems to me an easy way to get the ear yes. of your elected yes. officials. Yes. And there's something appealing about that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it, it, could be, it could be abused. The initiative, which is the second uh, um, method of access, is a request to the city council of the school board for a particular action, and it requires a percentage of voters to sign a percentage of voters to sign a petition. Very it's higher. It's a high, so it's a higher yes. standard that has to be met to get it on the table. Right. But that in that one, if that um, request is enacted, it, it it is required to take effect. Sure. If, the, if the school board of city council takes no action, it automatically appears on a municipal ballot. So it's a more complicated way, but it can't be ignored. Correct. Correct. <laughs> yes. You're kind of taking, the, the public, the, the, the voters are taking 
some of the uh, legislative action. Mm -hmm. that's, and that's why this is this is designed to, take it to the it's referendum. designed to be hard, but not impossible. So I suppose that with a referendum. Well, a referendum took once. The, the referendum was to reverse something already done. A citizen initiative is to have to, is to is to make them do something. Initiative. Well, to initiate something. Referendum is to reverse something. Or to affirm something, but that would come from the, from the body itself, right? A referendum. The referendum is same. It's the same. It's the same type of thing. You get signatures mm -hmm. and fifty percent of the voters. It's kind of the same kind of process, but it just it just reverses something they've already done. But what does the part mean? If you look at the referendum section that you, your explanations, it says it's to repeal a measure enacted by the council or to affirm an action taken by the council before the action takes effect. To affirm. I don't know what document you're reading. I don't think that's my document. Okay. Well, somebody gave us this little, this little thing. Did I do this on my own? I, I think you might have. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying that I'm good. It's been a while. This just says citizen relief mechanisms and charters. You sent that to me. I sent that on to her because she was oh, the person oh, overseeing. Oh no, that there. came from that came from the Department of Housing and Community Development. Not, I didn't write that. Oh, so in our referendum, it's only a, a repeal. Yes. Thing? Yes. So that's not at all similar to these other first two, if you're asking for a comparison. Correct. Because it has a very specific To, re to repeal a measure that was passed. Mm -hmm. The recent example on that is 17 years old, the DPO. Domestic partnership ordinance was passed by city council. Citizen collected information, said we want to repeal the domestic partnership ordinance, and they won by 80-something votes. So here is an example of how many sub-issues we would need to tackle um, to talk about this one. Because um, that referendum issue appears on the ballot at a regular or a special municipal election. Steve, or some, some of our web, that most city charters include the referendum, but that it's rarely used. And the issues are, do some issues require a referendum? Are some issues excluded from a referendum? What should be the percentage of voters to petition for a referendum? Should the council have an opportunity to reconsider its action? It's all in there. All that stuff is in there. Yeah. yeah. And should a certain percentage of voters participate in the election for its results to be valid? So those are the policy issues yes. that we have to decide. Yes. Signature requirements, uh, percentage requirements, and those are, those are things we need to decide upon. But we already have that in our term, yes. don't we? So we're yeah. just talking about whether or not we change. Whether or not we change. And I, I need to, I need to do, do we up the, do we to up the percentages, the percentages, do we want to play with any of that piece? But it already exists in our charter as a mechanism for citizens um, to voice their opinion. So these numbers that are included in your draft, were those lifted from your boilerplate, or are these the current? It's not your current ones. Okay. These are listed from, from, the, from boilerplate that I have. Okay. And, do the, and does your boilerplate Increase or decrease the burden on? on I don't know. I'd have to look at that. So, yeah, so, we do, we do that. so presenting it then to the, to the public forum is simply, uh, hopefully, a matter of saying we already have this. We would just need to, we're thinking about tweaking it in right. these following ways. Correct. But we won't have. The opportunity to have a discussion with this for a long time. The use of those has been very, very seldom. Very seldom. Because they're hard to do. Well, they're hard to get the requisite uh, number of voters to sign the petition. Something has to be conscious. Right. Well, you know. Well, the other one that was used was not how the CPA got about. Could we call it CPA? Mm -hmm. Well, that's what they could. The decision to forego discussion with the land. That was not binding. That was not. That was the state statute. So the numbers that you referendum could have brought that up as a challenge. Yeah. Okay, was CPA was that under the CPA state law rules and not our government charter rules? Probably, probably yes, it was. So it was done under a state statute. 
So in terms of the, the numbers that you drop into the boilerplate, is there a sort of a best practice about the, you know, the town X size, a certain percentage of signatures need to be? This is what I use. This, uh, okay. you know, Melrose is about the same size as, as North Hampton. Okay. These are the numbers that we decided upon in Melrose. And then the fourth method, which is the recall, is its own, it's its own thing. It doesn't have anything to do with this. But this, just to finish up on the three petitions, the free petition, the initiative petition, and the referendum, people are clear as to what their purposes are. Okay? So, Gail, do you have any more questions on that piece of it going into your December 6th public forum? You mentioned what would be ineligible, Section 8.4. Talks about, talks talks about what, what you can, what cannot be subject to any of these things. Okay, so it's already, it's already it's there, already. what you can't. Right. So do you want to move into recall? And this is what we began to talk about with the vacancy issues, and we talked about a little bit last time, too, when it wasn't working here. But this is the procedure to remove an elected official before the end of the term. And the information is that eight Massachusetts cities and 130 towns have it, and that it's not often used in cities. Can you help us understand that? You know, town politics, when you have you know, a small, small town, it's sort of What's the town right there here? Just talked about today. Hadley, uh, Hadley, Hadley. Uh, Belch, uh, Belch, uh, Belch, where they're, they're trying to recall Selectman for not renewing police chief's contract. Yeah. And everything is really nasty. These places are smaller, and more yeah. people are involved. In cities, um, you know, recalling the city councilor, uh, recalling the mayor is a big deal. You know, I've seen. You know, it, 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 you're right that for some, some reason the political dynamics in the city are different. I, I can't explain why, it's just that's the way it is. Well, um, town meetings, I think, foster that. Yes. Because people get together regularly for a variety of issues and they have the dialogue among themselves. Right, and they, and they say, like, in whenever, in any, in any small town, it's like you know, anywhere from 200 to 300 people are running the show. You know, uh, it's easy to mobilize. It's kind of, it's, and it's similar to, Impeachment. I mean, it's a big, right? It's a big, it's a big well, I think thing. I think, you know, I think the, the big decision about recall is whether to have it or not. Exactly. Now, by the procedure. And, and now, so my next question, and now that we understand a little more about the difference between cities and towns, is um, when we spoke about the issues of vacancy and how to determine um, disability and so forth, we all sort of came to the end result that recall is a is a remedy. Yeah. And yet, if cities don't tend to use it, and if you don't think they need it all that much, then the only remedy is this phantom taking something to a judge, which actually, I don't even know what So. It'd be difficult. <laughs> it'd be difficult. It'd be very really difficult, difficult because there's very little, be very little law on something like that. Right, right. So Unless guess, you specify the guidelines in your charter. In any violation charter, I think that it needs to be, it, it's responsible for the DA, I think, to, to take that down. If, if the mayor violates the charter, I think the DA is, is the, would be the appropriate jurisdiction to take that out. But this would be a violation. This would be... Someone's violating it, right? If they're disagreeing with the mayor. I'm going to see. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so the... Um, And it just comes down to that. I think we just have to pick up on that. If you're wondering, not. right. Um, you know, I've been through three uh, charter processes last year, um, as I've said before. Um, two of them adopted. This became a very, very contentious issue in the report. Okay. And, um, and they decided not, they, they, they caused them, uh, one person to not, <laughs> one person on the committee to file a, major, a minority report. Um, because it wasn't in there, but it was, it, it, it was a very heated debate about what they had. But in the end, New Report said no. What were the pros and cons? Well, I think that they thought that, you know, New Report's in the same kind of news catchment area as Lawrence, and they were, they were kind of like looking at the, what was happening in Lawrence with this recall thing, and it just divides the community. It's very contentious, bitter, 
it's not pretty. That's my reaction to that. Because it could be a witch hunt. I mean, you could, you could have a vocal minority that could just just make it miserable for an individual that has been abused. Sure. They did it for a slut and an Michalski was his right. name? And he actually was recalled. Yeah. But well, I'm just saying. Well, <laughs> the, the concern I have with, with recall is that, that um, I mean, we saw it happen to Gray Davis in California, and you've seen, seen uh, with the senators, both Republican and Democrat, in Wisconsin, and then um, now they're going after the governor, the Republican governor. And it's a, just a matter of, okay, are we, is business going to get done, or are we going to spend our whole time electioneering through this whole next four years? And, you know, uh, um, as much as my personal view might be about uh, Scott Walker, um, he, he, they literally filed the papers the day after they could, so they could recall him. And it's like, you know, that could happen to the mayor. That whatever the start date is, that vocal minority who lost the election could gather the signatures and file, and just be there because they didn't like the way the election was came out. And unless that number is very high for recall. It's, it's something that could easily be put on the ballot, and all we're in is this long election uh, fight that keeps going on past November. Elections are supposed to be healing. You're supposed to say, after the November Tuesday, you're supposed to say, okay, time to move on. This person won, fair and square, move on. I get nervous with recall. Just to follow on that, I think the first meeting we had, we talked, there was some issue of, um, or some proposal to if an uh, elected official was convicted of a felony, they would lose office. Yeah. And I think a number of people were uncomfortable with that provision. Let's take a hypothetical of an elected official who is caught up in a pedophile um, scandal like you're seeing around the country now. There's no option for recall. There's no felony provision. Right. Do you because wait two years to get rid of them? Or? It's, an, it's an accusation. Because it's an you're accusation. Not, you haven't been convicted. Correct. But even if they're convicted, um, and they're appealing. There's no provision that would that would force them to leave office. Well, it doesn't. If, if you're convicted, you're out, whether you're appealing or not. I think the discussion before was on the former felon. Former. Yeah. yeah. Former. Oh, it's like the, if you the, had the a person DUI or yeah. some type of thing. Okay, it wasn't if you're con. Okay, I, I was confused. Yeah. Okay, so it, so in any charter in the law, if if you're convicted of felony while in office, you lose your office. And if you're convicted of a felony, supposedly uh, that would that would, okay. you would be incarcerated. Yeah. Okay. And the state law says anybody, any elected official that's incarcerated, vacates office. Okay. That's already in state law. Other areas in this recall concept that people want to red flag, raise, or articulate? <laughs> Well, I think it goes a little bit to uh, length of term, you know, I mean, we've heard arguments about a two-year term, a four-year term, you know, if you don't have recall, a four-year term seems a little longer to wait somebody out. Um, it's a kind of balance to four-year term, yeah. what it has to be. Okay. It placates those that are against the term, it's uh, too long, so if you put a recall in, then that, that kind of gives them some comfort. Does it actually play cake? Yeah, it does. Because they think they have the security money. So they'll go along with the four years. But so people are so um, afraid of electing somebody that's incompetent, or somebody that's, it's like, well, you have to trust the electorate a little bit about knowing if you know. Maybe they'll pay more attention if it's a four year term. You know, it's just, it's, it's just, just this distrust that they have of their own judgment. Well, the criticism that we're getting that we got, yeah, you know, we, we had, we had, a, you know, we had a split opinion in the public forum last week on the subject, um, and those who were arguing for, arguing against the longer term for mayor, there's a narrative of excessive executive power that puts <coughs> some in the town and pull. Uh, so it's less about incompetence that someone's going to have this enormous amount of power to wield the wheel willy nilly for four years, no check by the by, by the public. It's the another the argument. Um, so in theory recall could say, well, if someone is, you know, gone rogue, you can you can yank them out. I don't know if it would placate the folks in town on that score, but uh, that would be the argument you would make. 
But there are no standards for what constitutes grounds. You can't put right. standards. So it's Again, I lost the election, so I'm going to mount a recall yeah. against my opponent who won. That could happen. You know. um, for those, the referendum, um, I just want to cite in our current charter, 17, 18, and 19, talk about the current percentages and stuff, um, pages. Just so you had that, I knew that I had read that at some point, and I wanted to make sure that that gets recorded in somebody's notes so they have it. Um, any other issues on the initiative petition referendums recall? Gail, are you comfortable for December 6th? I think so. I wasn't getting information on what you have now. And, okay. And okay. What's the difference? Okay. I recognize uh, Fire Chief Doug, and we've actually already come through yours. And, and uh, approved it? No, 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 no. no. Uh, uh, do you want to introduce your colleagues who are here with us and, and make a brief statement? And then we'll talk about that uh, to be candid, this is probably the charter is not where you want to address this issue, but go ahead. Okay, sounds good. So I have with me Assistant Chief Wayne Nichols and Deputy Chief Chris Norris. Um, and what I'm here to do is this comes out of a 1997 uh, report by Municipal Resources where they recommended the charter be updated to reflect changes within the fire department. And what I did is I wrote a, um, about a 20 page memo, fortunately I'm not here to read it to you tonight, uh, and it sort of goes through section by section of what the changes should be to update operations. For example, there's one reference to things that really weren't applicable uh, even in the 1890s, and it's still there. Uh, so the memo that I did sort of summarizes where current operations are today and looks for an update. I wanted to sort of bring that before this group uh, and we're certainly prepared to speak on specifics rather than go through point by point. Uh, before you go to the specifics and the, either the point by point, um, the, the point of the, and I'll turn to Steve to just, if I don't handle this correctly, a lot of what is in the current charter is material that should not be in the chart, but should be in an administrative code, okay. including the, all the areas you're addressing. We envision this as putting forward a charter that will be streamlined, yeah. that will exclude a lot of the stuff that, that you're concerned about, and that there will be a section within that charter that will say certain areas need to be addressed or uh, in the administrative code within X number of days. And it is, I was going to be writing you a letter basically saying that to the effect that good ideas, I understand where you're coming, I read your memo, however, it's the next step that you want to influence, which is when they write the and correct the administrative code. Right. All right, does that okay. make sense? It, it does, and actually that was going to be one of our suggestions for methodology of, as we saw it, there were a lot of things that it's been well over a decade since we had the opportunity to update them and streamlining it. Uh, was actually one of the things that Assistant Chief Nichols mentioned specific to fire prevention and I think could apply in general and would get us to where we need to be. Yeah. So we're going to take all those things that are in this document, the current document, pull them out, they're going to be set up on a special committee that will review the administrative code, that's when this issue will be dealt with, and then if there are suggestions from there that need to change ordinances, that will go to the, the next step of the ordinance committee of the City Council. Okay. Everybody comfortable with that? That's the suggestion, gentlemen. Thank you very much for coming in. You're more than welcome to spend the next 15 minutes. That's uh, the easiest or so. to months. <laughs> <laughs> Going right. over more regulations if you'd like, but uh, I, I know your time is valuable, yeah. and I, I appreciate you coming in. It is now part of the record, what you have said, and um, the memo is now part of the record. Gail, do you have a question? Well, two things. I want to make sure if Steve has anything to add that, that he should. But uh, is it also true, though, that we only get to that step of fixing what the chief and his colleagues need if the new charter passes. That was going to be my comment. Okay. But I'll support it. <laughs> <laughs> if it doesn't, we'll be back in another meeting. Exactly. Uh, and again, just in context, this comes out of a 1997 study. This was really the first opportunity I had to bring it forward. And a total, by doing this, represents about 94% completion of the items in that study and shows really dramatic progress. So I didn't want to let the opportunity go by. 
Uh, not that I wanted to come to another meeting, but uh, and I appreciate it being brief. So. Okay. Thank and you very much. For for the record, we are on the North Street Association uh, website. If you want to refer people to it, if they have questions about how this was uh, delineated, uh, decided. So just so you're aware that that's where it is. It'll be part of the minutes records, including the memo you submitted, so people can review it. Because again, we're just sort of kicking this homework down the road that needs to be done. It just will be done in the next phase of this overhaul. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you, gentlemen. I believe the next area is the discussion of the December 6th, 6 to 9 o'clock in City Council Chambers for public forum. Not hearing, by the way. The agenda says forum. Um, and we have our three leads who will be taking three areas. We also discussed that there would be an other. And my suggestion, and I would hope that you would concur, is that we divide other into two areas. Um, because I think there might be people who will come wanting to speak on the first five topics. And there will be, um, I would rather have other as in the first part of other as other parts of the charter that we did not highlight. And then have a second other, which would be if you have anything else as a wrap up to go back and you want to revisit something. Is that okay? Sort of a de 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 delineation of how we would define other. We have an hour set aside for that other, just for timelines. I just Ready? had a question. Um, so, um, so I thought I was just taking the temporary absent mayor. You were going to give me the whole section? I only ask that because I've got like three 12 hour days ahead of me. I never would be able to prepare for that. Okay. Um, I thought I was just taking that one section. That's what we were going over the last time. Um, there's no way I could, I mean, I could read it right off yeah. like that. If that Does, is anyone available to help uh, Rich out? Yeah, I have almost no. <laughs> I've already started okay. that, that small piece, and that's why I figured yeah. I would. I'm, I'm happy to help. Um, can we just lay out for me again exactly which sections that means we are we would be doing? The, the three that you know, I had in my mind, and I'm sorry for not being clear about this, was the temporary absence of the mayor, the delegation of authority of the mayor, and the vacancy of office of the mayor. So I think three nine, three seven, three nine are the, the real ones that need to be talked about. The rest right. of the stuff is. Uh, temp temporary absence. Three seven eight nine. Three seven eight nine. Okay. Is that? And you were Fred, You were comfortable on going on which one? The uh, three seven. Three seven. Okay. Yeah. 3 8 is just a bureaucratic thing. I mean, 3 9 is, is probably more where you want the public input. Now, Tom, are you available? Do you want to help out here, too? I'm willing to help. I'm okay. happy to not do it. Okay, then I'm going to <laughs> Tom to ask Tom. So um, that was the area that I had some thoughts on earlier. Perfect. So if you could pick up on the vacancy of the mayor, okay? And uh, we'll, we'll just separate those two out on the agenda if that works for you. Because basically, what I had put down for what I was planning for the temporary absence of the mayor basically don't even hold water. I was almost after reading it afterwards, just read it as it is. You know, you'd looked at it for charts and stuff. Because I remember the questions that I asked you, I was going to, um, uh, like, compensation about who should, you know, the council president. Right. I mean, I know it's to give a discussion. Um, so I was kind of asking questions, but that, that won't even be necessary. That just, I could just take the as it is and just read it. And ask for comments and and we can put it up on the as it is right right we'll put it up on the uh, screen screen okay we probably won't get a lot of I, I think, think the think, well that's why there's not a lot there the vacancy will probably get more discussion in the temporary absence I would think but the vacancy is going to be hard to describe when you don't know what the term is yet so I mean on the vacancy you have to say well if it's a four year term we have to say well if it's in the first three years or from last year or the two year term if it's within the first you know eight months and that's what we get I don't think the public really wants to deliberate that I, I don't think but they I guess well I guess I guess they could say well, we don't want to we don't want to we don't want a temporary mayor for more than a year you know because two years is a long time if it's a four-year term so I mean those are the decisions you have to, you have to, you have to, you have to come up but I'll, it's, it's, you know, when do we when do we want it when do what, what's the trigger for the special election What's the trigger? What what's the period in time of the term that triggers an election? I guess that that kind of sums it up. <laughs> Are you available to 
talk with me about this. Of course, you have my way. You have my contact information. <coughs> yep. so we'll, and what we have done is we've produced a slide for each one that goes up on the PowerPoint. Richard, if you could figure out what you want on that slide. Okay. Tom, on your slide, and then we'll, we'll just give them to Mary, and they'll pop up. They'll be posted ahead of time, and then they'll pop up on the screen, so people have that visual in front of it. And when do you need this by Mary? Preferably. Well, yeah, I can wait till like Sunday night. That's fine, and then get it to Mary Monday morning. But it, it, it's basically what this section is going to say. Well, what you want the public to see up on the screen that will lead to discussion and input. Right, Phil. For the one we did last time, they were all sort of roughly pro con. There were different choices that you have. Yeah, first, frame these questions. Um, so you don't want this discussion. This discussion could naturally turn into a tool for you during discussion. You don't want to do it. Well, if, well if, you, if you do, if you do, you know that's fine. But I mean, so one of the, some of the formats of these are all posted. You can see. Yes, okay, you know that we did for the questions, so that's what we saw. And each lead took a uh, stab at writing this. Okay. Um, one slide per. per we would slide. know if we can have multiple slides if necessary, because especially your area, Gail. I think that that's going to be um, if you want to break. The, each four off into at least one slide. I think that's probably the easiest way to go. So people see the differences in all four, unless you can get them somehow into one. Yeah, I, I can't get them into. I can't get four into one. You can maybe get three into one if you if you're thinking along that line. Just so people, I think it's what's good is to see the difference between those three vehicles. You know. And do recall as it's on. And then do recall over here. So the the, but you know that. Uh, I always get confused between the free initiative and the referendum, and what's the purpose of those that you wrap your head around. So, Gail, were you, were you, you want, did you want to actually discuss what the number of signatures should be? And well, I, I don't think we can do that. I don't I, think I you think, should. No, I, I, that's much too easy. You should say, do I you want? I mean, the thing with the public is going to say, do you want free petition? The public is going to say, yes. <laughs> do you want it? Yes. <laughs> They're all going to say yes because it allows them to participate. Well, what we did last time was we, we laid out the pros and cons okay. of each option. And I think it would make sense to do that here. But if we have time, I'd like a little input from everybody on the pros and cons yeah. of the three. Yeah. Although it, it sounds like referendum we already have, and it's not likely to go away. And it should, probably shouldn't. And it shouldn't go away. Right. No. The, only one is, the only one I think is free petition and recall at this point. I, I think you need initiative, and I think you need referendum. It's the recall that's going to generate most of the chatter, and, and the free petition, you know, is, you know, is could be dangerous here. So, I mean, but people are going to, if you put it out there, the public's going to say, yeah, we want it. Mm -hmm. But you know, this 50 signatures is just going to create havoc. I don't know. I mean, I. So, but it, but it's but it's very easy access is the pro. Yeah. And the con is you can clog up the work of the city council um, very significantly. Yes. Well, how, how is that with the Iraq war um, issue? How did that appear on the agenda of the city council? Was that a council member who got it I thought, on? I thought it was a council member. Yeah, it was brought up by the public. Okay. But did they have a mechanism to do it or they just did I think they asked for a council to submit a resolution. I think that's how it went down. I could be wrong. Um, and the council submitted a resolution that he had affirmed a vote by the city council. And then there was debate whether that was relevant to the city council um, jurisdiction and the, the, the bank on that was that we're sending our tax dollars and having less local aid because of wars. So, so the petition would only kick in if kick that group could not find budget. a council person, couldn't find a, a council member willing to submit it for them. Correct. And then your so, free petition, again, if you read the language very clearly, it says that they may or may not necessarily, they have to hold a form on it. That form could be 15 minutes. You know, it's not like they're, right. you know, they have to hold a form. Well, that's great. Or yeah, that's Maybe it's a question for the public court, but if you're unable to get a counselor to do it on their own accord, and you can force them to have a hearing on it, but the hearing doesn't have to be very long. You're sort of the, the, the decision's been made. The elected officials don't want to take up that issue. They're not going to have any affirmative resolution. You'll so get your 15-minute commercial. Right. Well, in a, in a way, it, 
in a way, it makes people feel like they have greater access than they actually do. Them. It, it, it's not. It, it's well, not. That's, I think your point is that, that it has the ability to clog without necessarily having the ability to achieve a specific goal. But but these resolutions, these, these actions, tend to attract the media. You know, I mean, Northampton, you know, debating tonight over whether you know we should be in Iraq and. For some reason the newspapers love to tell that. Oh, oh wait, 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 we do that. We, we, we already have those two things. Uh, like it happens in Cambridge all the time. You know? oh. it's like, <laughs> and they get, they get news coverage, so they get exposure. Mm -hmm. And this is the vehicle they use to do it. But it doesn't it also offer a vehicle for things that could involve local issues that people want to bring yeah, to public attention? The, the living wage was is an example, right? Uh, that's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. Living wage was, was one of those. Yeah. Uh, so, if, if the initiative is the better vehicle, um, how would you describe its pros and cons? In other words, it, there's relatively easy access with that vehicle. It's not as easy, but there's still. You shot it actually becoming law. Yeah, it grows everything. It can, it can become law and people get to vote on it. Mm -hmm. The cons are that it's more difficult to get it onto the ballot because of the number of signatures that you need, the verification of the signatures, the expense of what well, wouldn't necessarily be a special election. But no, would that the, the con could be could the election costs because, again, you have to tally that result. I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's appropriate that it's, a, it's appropriate that it's to do because it has the force of law. I mean, it's twelve percent. It's twelve and now. What, what page is that? Eighteen. Um, I'm having trouble quickly sorting out because I have to go back and reread this. But seventeen and eighteen um, talk about filing the initiative petitions. Initiative petition requires twenty percent of registered voters and a take back the thing. Referendum. Right, and this, and this, I think this initiative and referendum are probably totally different processes in our community. Because I think, that, uh, not the reason again myself, but the initiative, I mean, at least the referendum is two steps. I mean, it's probably not two steps in that. It's a lot harder. It's 20% of registered voters, and we have to do it within a certain time that the yeah. measure passes. It has to be affirmed by the clerk that there are all the signatures and all that stuff. A referendum petition to protest a measure passed by the City Council of School Committee, that's a section 40-F, within 20 days after final passage of a measure, um, uh, except a revenue loan. Um, City Council or School Committee petition signed by registered voters uh, equal to the number of at least 12% of the number of registered voters to present the city council. So one of your things is going to be days and percentages. Is they have 20 days? This is the referendum. Well, I'm simply saying it's, it's, this, this makes it a little bit harder than what we have. I mean, getting into the minutiae of how many days and all that stuff is probably, I don't know if we need to. No, we need to. It was just say, we've made this a little bit, a little bit um, uh, more difficult to do. And we've, we've, we've in the language as this this language is probably so old that I'm not sure if we submitted to the AG or if they would approve it. Um, so this is this is language that has been approved by the Secretary of State's office and the Attorney General for procedure. Steve, could you just clarify in the in the current initiative, according to David, it's twenty percent of registered voters in section eight two C line six line fifteen you have 10% for the... That's... So are you, are you lowering the threshold yeah, in that second phase? Yes. Okay. The section 40-C, it's page 17, authorized actions by city council or school committee on receipt of initiative petition, signatures of 20% of registered voters. I was lowering it to 10%, going to encourage more abuse, or is it still a pretty high threshold, high hurdle to get over? 20% right now would be about 4,000 voters. 
uh, we're somewhere between 18 and 20,000 people, so 3,500 to 4,000 um, people would need to sign it. Lowering it, obviously, would cut that in half. Just as a And the 20 drops, to, I mean, it's interesting that these are in our charter. There's 20 for that one, and it's 12 for the referendum. And the referendum is different because you have a short, short period of time in which to get your signatures. The initiative is open-ended. Yeah, you could take weeks or months to get your signatures. Now, this, this, now this will encourage, hopefully, the city council to take some action so that we're going to go forward. If they don't take some action, then you have to go and get five, four, five percent more. More. Okay, so that's in section E. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. I mean, you would hope the city council by that time will have cases. <laughs> and, well, depending on the issue, I guess. But you know, if this, if this is a ball of fire, they don't want. I'm sure they don't want to be told what to do through an through a, through a. This actually gets really complicated. If it's more than 8 percent, less than twenty percent. Yeah, it gets complicated. <laughs> and anything, and then any of these elections, if, like I said, you'd have to have twenty percent, at least twenty percent turnout. So even if you did everything right, if you don't have twenty percent out, too bad. It doesn't go into effect. So there's all sorts of little safeguards in the end, which is God against frivolous stuff. Now, Gil, are you comfortable with the material you have? Yeah, okay. okay. We have that document you can work with with uh, Steve on some of that as well. Now, Mark, you're being conspicuously quiet over there since you've got the middle one. Um. No, I have the middle one. Oh, you, for the sections in the elections? Yeah. No, I'm all right. Then I'll put together. It looks like so a question about this initiative, though. Is it? If it's um. What about the case if you have if you have an initiative that gets passed, it now is scheduled to become law, but it conflicts with something else, even if something existing law maybe would supersede that, but say there's a counter initiative that also passes, and there's some conflict. Uh, you know, would there be a, is there, there's some provision that you would have to say that it well, still has to meet other criteria? It was one of the weaknesses of citizens initiative because right. the citizens initially write it that thoughtfully being aware of what else is off the books and um, uh, you know uh, if you have and you have conflicting statutes it tends to become a matter of uh, you know the judiciary to, to sort it out. Yeah, um, uh, elsewhere when I lived in San Francisco I lived in California is completely played with, with initiatives. Um, there was a initiative to not build the central freeway that passed, and then the next year there's an initiative to, pass to build the central freeway, and then the third one to repeal the central freeway, and they went back and forth a bit, because the, the people who were the maddest at the moment were the ones that, that showed up. So, um, I mean, that's the, that is the risk you run if the bar is too low and you're, and you're flooded with it. Now, if the, if the bar is higher, um, you tend to give a better shot of having more well thought out initiatives clear the bar and, 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 and have a, a good debate over it. Other comments in this area? The three people who, four people who will be taking the lead in this conversation on December 6th are comfortable with what they have? I'm you still unclear about what I have. <laughs> You're just doing the one section. The one section. Temporary absence of the mayor. Okay, so who's going to do the communication of special meetings, approval of the mayor's meeting? You don't need to worry about that. You're not even going to do no. it. Well, It'll be part of the other. There'll be people will be able to chance to talk about it. I get what you're saying. But okay. we're flagging. Yeah. We have been flagging certain areas that we want public comment on. Okay. Where the communications is to me not. You know, I don't want the ten people. If you notice, who had to talk on every issue in the last forum, <laughs> getting up and talking about every issue. I honestly, <laughs> I think, I think that the, the big, the big ones were at that meeting. I mean, as far as the the, the important questions, personally. Yeah. Um, these are not unimportant, but I think the elements were more right. fresh. I mean, we might blow through these faster. I think so. And have more time for an open floor. My, look at, I think your, your question can be uh, addressed in Section 80. For 50 provisions. It's, it's only, a matter, only a matter that gets the, the highest number of votes. So if two things are in the same election, oh. it contain conflicting provisions, only the yeah. one that gets the most votes. Okay, are we 
right or wrong, that's what, what is in the proposed charter. Okay. Other questions in the area of the, we have a lot more to talk about under the public forum. So I just want to make sure that the four people doing the slides will get me the slides by 5 o'clock on Sunday. Now, I want to take this opportunity just to, to remind people that um, we can have conversations by email. If they are, um, we're canceling the meeting, we're moving the meeting forward. We start offering opinions, you're just getting your ear across the line. So, um, into open meeting law discussions. So all discussions seem to happen in these forums, not necessarily by email. So you share information? Share information. So we're, 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 doing doing slide, we're sending a slide around to take a look at. As long as you say the punctuation is not correct, you haven't spelled the word correct, or you might want to include this provision. But once you start debating the provisions, then you 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 we're really pushing open meeting laws here. Um, a related question, forgive me if I'm going to chew up time. No, um, yeah, we have plenty of time. Um, we're going to start voting on things soon. Yes. Um, if we have ideas that are essentially for new ideas, ways to have compromises or novel approaches and whatnot, yes. and we want to give people a chance to chew on them before having to discuss and vote on them, yes. is it appropriate to send those by email to the group if, if if we no one's going to respond to them and give their opinions about them afterwards. Steve, Mary, no. thank you. That's not that's not appropriate. And you know, and the other thing is, this group is not required to vote on anything. You're not you're not really a governing body in the sense that it's force of law. I, mean, I want these processes where there hasn't been any votes taken. It's just is everybody satisfied? Can everybody live? Can everybody live with fifteen percent? Yeah. Okay. Let's move on. You don't go roll call vote for everything. You're pretty unless, much. unless you can't come to consensus on something. Just consensus cannot be, you know, um, um, reached. Then you go to a vote. Now I, I turn to Barry for any other comments on the open meeting part of it. Anything else you'd love to make sure that we are within compliance on? Well, we do have the agenda already posted, mm -hmm. so I'm assuming you want this revised tomorrow, and you want the other section? Just to be broken out into two sections, which is other uh, segments of the, not segments isn't the right word, other, is it chapters or sections? What's the chart? Sections of chapters? Just articles and sections. Okay. Other articles of the, of the charter, and then um, general comments. So people then can come back to one through five if they'd like to. Are you going to allow time on this to talk about anything from the first public forum? Yeah, that's the, where the general comments oh, would come. Okay. Okay, if people want to come back and reflect as to what they might have said or they heard something at, on TV that they want to come and comment on. That would be in the, the second section. If people are comfortable with that, sp spreading those two out. Okay? Um, I'll open those uh, question. So if there is specific language or ideas uh, that one wants to propose for the charter, is, is it not appropriate to send them by email and only to present them here? I know what you take that first. For, for example, I yeah. came up with uh, alternate language for that section. Right. Is that something that... You presented should, in a public forum. Uh, yes. Is that okay. not appropriate to send by email for people to be aware of in advance. Now, Mary, I just want your, your, your checking on this, and again, we might need to go to Wendy on it, but my thought is that if you actually took that information and circulated it as, as an agenda item, that that was okay, as long as there wasn't discussion on it. Right. So, there's no the Tom has the language, language you say. He, he wants to people to read before the meeting. Mark has language he wants to read. Bill has language he wants to read. If that goes to you, it, 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 with the idea that this would be put on the agenda, and that people then could read it before they come to the meeting, that's legal. It's not again. Yes. So it's it's again. So that's legal. But when the problem is when you start responding, because of the start, 
Okay. Opinions and opinions and over replies, replies, replies. Right. Yeah, dialogue. Right. Okay. Send but just send that to Mary. Okay. Send it to Mary. No, I, I wouldn't think so. I would think it should all go to the chair because the chair tells me what to put on the Okay, either way. You either could way. all send out language to me, and I could start adding on three pages, and then you could say, what the, you know, what's going on here? We're supposed to have these. Right. I, you know? I, I'm going to caution. I, I hear you, and, and we'll, we'll work that piece out. Um, I want to do it in a more systematic way, though. I want to, after the hearing, we're going to have a meeting on the 14th. And then I want to be able to say, okay, let's on this day we're going to take a tackle this stuff. So if you've got the stuff in this area, make sure we have it by this timeline. If that's okay, just so we we don't dump a whole document dump on everybody that everybody's reading over the holidays. Let's be a little more, you know, proactive about this. Then we'll tackle articles one through five, and then five through ten is the last piece, and we'll be both making votes on these issues. We'll be a little more planned out, but you and I and Mary need to have that worked out in our own brains. Um, timelines, and, and I have several questions for our, our uh, advisor here as we move into new business. It was raised to me that there cannot be a menu vote on the charter, correct? Correct. Why? Because I couldn't come up with a why. That's what, why. What's a menu what's vote? vote? A menu vote would be that um, you would have the bulk of the charter, okay, and then you would have should option A, B, and C. Should the, should the, if you pick out those five hot topics that we talks. talked about, should there be term limits? Yes, no. Should there be, you know, mayor do this? Should the city clerk do that? And that those would be separate questions underneath, except the broad charter, and then vote on those issues. Why? My, 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 my quick answer, and I don't mean to reflect this, not doing your job. Um, second is what what happens when something doesn't get fifty percent? And you end up with nothing. Right. Just because of like by like votes, you get nothing. You end up with nothing. But that's so you've got fifty percent of total turnout, um, including blank votes for this to pass. A charter can pass with less than fifty percent, right? No. No. Nothing can. No, it could be ones registered voters as opposed to those voting. Is that what you're asking? Oh yeah, I mean, we get, we have a lot of you know, forty one percent, you know, of the votes for at large of the council left over blank. Um, yeah, and, and for the CPA uh, candidate is even worse. Um, I assume we're not not everyone's gonna vote on the charter. <laughs> People are gonna leave a blank. Right. Does it, so how does that affect the voting results legally? What are fifty percent of what? Of people voting or the of the voters? Vote votes. You know the votes. votes. So if you're blank, you're just out of the picture. Okay. So then how can anything be under fifty percent? If it's a, it's all yes now. Okay, so for instance, we have here's the bulk of the chart. I'm gonna have to somehow get it out to people so they can read it ahead of time. Um, the Charter Committee, and then it, remember, goes to the City Council, because whatever we recommend goes to the City Council. Um, let's just assume that they buy our, our menu concept. Have put, uh, hold out these three areas for an up or down vote in these three areas. City Clerk, Term Limits, Mayor running the City Council. Yes, no. And that whatever that yes, no would be determined changes the, the, the verbiage of the, the Charter. That's too complicated for. I and then, then, then but, going but, crazy on that. Right, but then, then how do you go back and rewrite the chart that's, that's, yeah. that's already voted on? Well, you have blanks, and those three questions fill in the blanks. Right. Um, the right. outcome of the three questions. Provisions. Um, if you vote, I, I don't think. It, it, do I'm not saying it's not complicated. Right. I mean, legally, I, I, I think the, the question is: Is it legally possible to do it? Isn't that what your question yes. was? Yes. And I have an opinion from 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 uh, from, a, a, from a lawyer on the bounce of both of the bounce one said you can't do that. That's a little too messy. And plus, I mean, how long is the question going to be? Oh, I, 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 I'm there. I mean, the whole concept of how this vote is going to take shape is going to be iffy, and I also think that opens a can of worms. But that goes back to I think the point that Pat Goggins, former city council president, raised when Pat said. 
you know, it's unfortunate, but what you have to do with the charter is figure out where your poison pills are and decide whether you want to put the whole charter up against one poison pill. And I think this goes back to the conversation about the city clerk mm -hmm. um, and, you know, some of the other issues. Do, if you include a certain way with that that people might feel strongly about, that might be the poison pill that uh, sends the whole charter down, which is what happened in 73. Um, it was the city clerk issue that, that Pat referred to. So it's just something to think about, and I was trying to figure out how you can pull the poison pills out, and I don't, use, I don't like that term, but just to use his term, the, the hot topics, and have people vote on those individually versus the whole charter. Here's the charter, and should these be included or not? The preliminary on the hot topics. Yeah, see, that's, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know uh, not out of my ballpark. How do, so how do they present it on the ballot? I mean, vote yes or no? Yep. There is. And a summary. So you asked if, if they leave a lot of blanks. When they shut the landfill down, basically, that was a pretty small percentage of people who voted in the totality of the voters that shut it down. So a little tiny bit spoke for a whole bunch of people who were too lazy to vote for it. Correct. So that's what we're into. So, I mean, you, you take what you take, yes or no. It is what it is. So, yeah. it's just, so you're saying no to many just so we get that off the yeah. table. I could cross that out. Well, that's a recommendation, or you're saying that's the law. That's I'm saying that's the law. Okay. To follow on, on that, this conversation, uh, my takeaway from, or my feeling coming out of the last forum, um, is that if we're going to be proposing changes to the school committee council, it would be nice to invite former members like Pat Dawkins to come and speak to us. Um, I don't feel that I have a mandate to you know, start proposing changes until we've heard to them. I don't think anyone from the school, school committee was at the last forum. Yeah. And um, so I think that's... And one former. One, so one former, yeah. yeah. One former, but no current. But, okay. I'll be uh, um, again, I, that's one of the areas, thank you Todd for getting me to my next area, which is a potential forum where we invite the mayor, the, the presidents of the city council and the vice chairs to come and to speak about their unique role in relationships. And then we would ask them to join us in a meeting here. Not, I mean, the public can come and join us. It can certainly be taped. But I would love to see the interaction between, you know, Mike and Dave and Pat and Jim as former city council presidents about why the mayor should run or not run the meeting. Because I was a little surprised at, at Pat's reaction. And, you know, just to kind of like, okay, you guys, you all ran the job. You did it for two decades. The city has run very well for those two decades, but you have different opinions. Let's hear from you on those opinions. Are people comfortable with that kind of a forum? I'd love a forum like that, that we could pick their brain. Right, exactly. Yeah. So we would invite certain people to come. There would still be the public forum for those folks who would like to articulate their point of view, but when we start the meeting, it would only we'd only recognize those people that we've invited to come to the, before us to speak on these issues. That Bill, Mark? Do you know what the public comment allowed? We, we would have it at the beginning of the meeting, or we could even put it at the end of the meeting, but I just I just sort of want to, to not get into side issues. I want to hear from the people who run the city why there's a group now that says take the mayor off the city council, and why there's a group that says keep the mayor on the city council. Because, I mean, that's where I thought Mary and Pat were at, at that meeting. That, you know, keep the mayor there. And, you know, these are two people who ran the city for a decade. Now that's different than the prevailing, I mean not the prevailing, but the more recent opinions of people who've been on those jobs. So it would just be interesting to have sort of a dialogue. Is that, are people at that, are they comfortable? Okay. And I, as you said, I would like to have some more city school committee people talking about what's real relevant about um, the vice chair position, which is the, the elected city council person, who, or excuse me, school committee person, um, uh, hearing more from the school committee vice chairs uh, as to why they think it should change or not change. So we would look at probably the last, you know, X number of years and have those people come and share their points of view. The other person who I thought was fascinating was your former chair um, of the original committee. And is there any new information from that that we should glean or should we be respectful of that group? We read their report, we were submitted their report. 
Is there any reason to have those folks have I mean, the, There was never any debate. Any suggestions about policy changes in the final report were things that the writer of that report, who was not out, um, just stuck in. There was never any debate. You should not take those as, as endorsements of the full committee or, or anything. They were, just, they were just put in their placeholders. That's what I thought you had told us before. I just wanted to confirm that. Were they bringing those folks in to quiz them? They were not affected. They there were, were four or five at the, at the, I asked them to stand up at the public forum to be recognized. So they were the city councilors yeah. who were there for other reasons. Right. And me. And right. Alan. <laughs> So, any other comments or questions, Megan? No. Does yeah. that does does adding that kind of a panel um, affect the number of meetings? It might, and that's where we go next. Okay. So I, I don't want to move that. And the, the two things we have left on the agenda is the rest of the meeting schedule to make sure that we all are saved the correct date, and then Bill's concept about PR for this December sixth meeting. Which one do you want to take first? Um, why don't I for the PR first? Go for it. Um, so just so folks know, um, I, I had that little award for uh, public discussion the other day because you know one person you know uh, felt that uh, you know, the word hadn't really gotten out about, about our for, our first forum, um, and it wasn't terribly well attended. What I did, you know, I had three people come plus plus Megan plus Councillor Jesse Adams. Uh, and the bulk of the discussion was how bad our public outreach was for the first forum, um, and uh, and just so just so we can recap, you know, we got we got coverage in the Gazette ahead of time. We got two segments on WHMP separate ones ahead of time. Uh, we had Northampton Media ahead of time, uh, and uh, I don't think I'm, and we and we had people on our own accord emailing things out uh, what the state generally does. Flyers. Um, well, we did not do flyers. I did. Oh, you did? Yeah. I, would, I, I wish I knew that because I thought I was being yelled at because we didn't have flyers. <laughs> um, so, um, so, I don't know how representative that opinion is. Uh, I don't know if you guys have gotten feedback that's similar or just people just saying, I really don't know what you guys are doing. I didn't know you were doing this. But uh, it might behoove trying to. So, on one hand, I think we should try to raise it up a notch if at all possible. On the other hand, I think it's difficult because we did a lot of issues the first time, so we have a little less to sell the second time. Uh, although we could sell, this is also just a general, general open floor for everyone's uh, opinions. Um, so I think it'll be harder to get the media coverage, the the, the, um, the pre-event media coverage that I'll try. And I don't think I can do a full-blown press release this time. I think I can do informal uh, outreach to the folks who covered it before. Um, uh, I thought it might be useful to do flyers, not that I think it's anything like a silver bullet to get people out, but just to say that base was covered and get them, I don't know where you put them, but uh, Florence, Florence, we may do a Florence, do a cap to Northampton. Um, I'm happy to try to draw those up and, and have you guys, and have all of us try to stick them in a few places. Um, the bigger idea that I had was can we use the city's automated phone system to, re to contact every, every person and, and, and make an announcement. And then, no one could say we didn't try to cut everybody because people would look like the weather, the weather phone. Yeah, it's yeah. a good idea if we could do that. I don't know what the logistics of probably make a few people. Right? Maybe that's, that's all right. right. It's not Mary, not idea at all. Look into that, or should I have Mark ask the the mayor about it? Sure. <laughs> 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 Bill, not yeah, Mark. Sorry. Bill, can I follow up by calling Cream uh, in the mayor's office and ask what the protocol would be that we would. Wondering if it's possible to put a tape message out. Who's, um, who's the proper person to ask? Kareem. Kareem. And who's Kareem, the new person with Kareem? Lynn. Lynn. Kareem or Lynn? It's 587 1249. And just ask them what is the protocol because we again want to increase the outreach with a simple message you, you could drop ahead of time, just public forum on, about changing the city's charter. It'll come to a vote next November. We won't be for I'd like to apologize to the committee that I'm just a little bit um, battered tonight because today was the deadline for 68 bars and restaurants and 17 packages to bring all the paperwork. <laughs> just a little bit. I'm sorry. <laughs>
Many of them waited until today. Many of them waited until today. So if you don't mind following through. I can follow up. Um, and, and as far as language <laughs> for what that call would be, is it okay if I draft it? Would you yes. want to see it? No, I think you're quite capable of putting together what you need to put together to get that out there. This, again, is a simple message of getting people to come to this forum. Do I legally have to say all the topics are listed in the public notice? Or can I just be more broad? You can refer to the website. Okay. Where the topics that have already been discussed are up there. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, again, I and here are the topics we're still covering, but we are looking at the charter, a complete overhaul of the charter. This isn't, you know. I, I disagree with whoever told you that personally. They looped your, your um, segment on the radio over and over. I heard it like six times. Uh -huh. I thought the press did very good. I did too. We didn't really get anything in the union, I don't think. Maybe that no, would Fred, I don't, Fred was absent. If you notice, Fred's been missing for a while. Yeah. So that would be an odd, but, yeah. but I thought that the coverage was, was really good. I did too, actually. I mean, they're responding. I, I don't you know, but like you said, it's, dr it's like this stuff we went through tonight. You're right about it. Like all of a sudden your eyes start to glaze over. It's like, but so a lot of people aren't that interested. Having, having been on, now this is my fourth big committee for the city in 20 years, I have never not gotten that comment. Right. I mean, so I don't know if it's representative. I had people at the end of the North Campus 350 is saying, oh, you're celebrating North Campus 350? <laughs> yeah, we exactly. had five years of publicity, planning, events, and people said, "Oh, you're celebrating the 350." But the but the but the bigger <laughs> concern here is like if that if that opinion is pervasive. Uh, but again, you're, you're hearing anecdotal. You're not hearing pervasive. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I don't I don't know if it's pervasive. Yeah. The fear is that if it is pervasive, then it affects our ability to get it passed. I fully, so, yeah, I fully so understand. So I just want to make sure we we try as hard as we can to cover every possible base. I fully understand that. One thing that may help is, um, I mean, if we, the notice that I put up was just Mary's draft, Mary's announcement of this public meeting. And I did it up in Cooper's and Lilly Library and Forbes Library, too. But <clears throat> that was outside of my, my area. But my wife is in the Forbes Library, so I'm sick of this one up. Uh, so she's a good librarian there to do it. But if you can just print that out and do it in your respective wards right. at any sort of public, you know, uh, key spot. And it, it did come on an email list because I got it on the email list. So that's why. It went out on board three yeah. lists, sir. Yeah. yeah. So it, it, it went around. <coughs> so I, I disagree as well, Bill. I thought. I mean, so what else? I, mean, I mentioned all these things. I didn't get it. My friends didn't see it. No one reads the Gazette. No one listens to their HMP. Oh, okay. well, well, if it's not working, it's not working. You know. <laughs> They're probably not going to vote. <laughs> so. Well, I, I, I sent it to, uh, to the one that I think at Jackson Street School, and she had sent it out on her email list for a while. So I think it got well, well, That's right. So, yeah. and, and for what it's worth, we appreciate the feedback. We will try to up our ante, up the, the uh, for this particular form, and we'll go from there. All right. Now to Gail's question. We have to kind of scope out. And you need to get your PDAs or whatever you've got to keep your calendars going. Um, but we have a timeline. Could our consultant talk to us about that timeline and how firm it is and what we have to worry about? So we, we, uh, the way it stands now, this committee is supposed to be done in January. January 1st, January 3rd. January 3rd. And, and why January? Just so we have that as a backup. As because we need to give time. The legislature has to get this by May. So you have to give the city council at least um, three months yeah. to, to, to deliberate this thing. Then you have to get it to the legislature in April, actually. You have to give the legislature a few months to get this through their process. And then. Um, then the charter has to, then the, then the whole charter document, and, may, and whether it gets mailed to every household, I mean, that's not yet that the council make that decision on how that thing done. It gets to the clerk in order, to, in, in, in enough time for her to get it printed on the ballot, or if it's going to be in the state election ballot, we have to get it to the Secretary of State to make, on their timeline to get it printed on the ballot, and then it goes on the ballot in November. So it's really, this is tight. Okay. So, um, and I'm not really worried about this committee, I'm worried about the political process after this committee. Right. Um, in, the, in the rush to get something done versus doing it right, 
we'll have to sort that out as time goes on. Excuse me. The uh, actual order states, states that the special act charter must go to the city council for consideration no later than January 19th, mm -hmm. which is our second meeting in January. Okay. Well, so it has to be completed how many days before that? Um, we publish for the 19th being Friday before. So that would be the 13th, Friday the 13th. Oh, God. Okay, kids. Can I ask, uh, for the people to uh, uh, Pat, you want to go down yet, say so, but uh, relative to PR concerns and uh, public feedback concerns, um, I take Stephen's point uh, that we don't have to take formal votes necessarily, that we can all just come to Kumbaya consensus at the end. Um, presumably, there'll be some point, uh, and whether at the very end of the process or maybe some points in between, where there will be news coverage of decisions that we have made. Correct. Uh, it is not unusual for the backlash to occur after that point. <laughs> Wait a second, I didn't hear about that. You're, you're going to vote on that? You're going to make that decision? What's going on? Um, to the extent that we are able to get the word out in advance of whatever meeting it is when we're on the verge of making some sort of decision. So there could be a news story saying, Special Act Charter Government Committee is about to make a decision about X, come to make the public comment to get your two cents in. We should think ahead about that, I would suggest. Yes? I hear you. Isn't that what the public forums are for? I mean, we had talked at one point about not only having the early forums, but then they give the chance the, the, for the public to have a comment on a final draft before we were to send it forward. Now, help me with our decision-making process. We are not making a decision, per se, about the charter. We are making a recommendation to the, to the city council, yeah. who will then tinker the hell out of it and come up with the, what, goes the <laughs> right. what goes on the ballot. What goes on the ballot. So we are making a recommendation that we think these are the best changes, that we think this is the best Done. form. They might come back and reverse three or four of the, our recommendations. And they so, will have open meetings. And they will have open meetings as well. So, so at a certain point, we have to own some of it. Some of the rest of it can be owned by the city council. But that, that sort of begs the question, should we be putting forth sort of an ideal charter, a best practices charter, or should we be putting forth a practical charter that's going to pass? If the council has the ability to say, no, we don't want to, we don't want to deal with the um, clerk's issue. We're yeah. going to drop that. Yeah. We're going to drop this, drop yeah. this. What, what, what mandate do we have? We have a mandate to put a recommendation forward, period. And in any form you want. I mean, we could, the, the form of the form could be the actual document, like we're doing what we're working on now, and say this is what our ideal document would look like. Or you could just say, you know, here are the following 50 recommendations and bullet points, if you wanted to. But so we did that at the time I offered a copy of the city council that write the actual language themselves into that process? No, because I'm going to have to. <laughs> <laughs> and he's going to have to come to those meetings. Either way. <laughs> Either way. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm committed to this process. Okay. So yeah. I have to go to the city council meetings. Right. And then I have to go to, you know, to the uh, election division. I'll have to, you know, i got to make sure this thing gets done. Right. If, if, yeah. somebody yeah. Wants to, if someone wants to bail to every household, that's going to be a whole other issue because they're going to, you know, the, the, someone's going to have to you know, get it printed up. It's got to go to the post office, a bulk mailing, and all oh, that's, that's probably a ten, fifteen thousand dollar thing. I don't think the city council is going to. I don't know what the city council will do, but it would be nice if it was mailed to every household. But you, it, 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 but you're not, you don't have to do that. And it could, it could be actually a waste. Again, but, you know, above our not, pay grade. Right, right. Above our pay grade, that's yeah. not it. So when we're taking a look at. Um, Wednesday night meetings, we have January 4th and January 11th. That doesn't work for the 4th. Okay. Do we have another day that week that could work for people? The 3rd is inauguration and um, organizational meeting. 4th, I take notes for license commission until 6th. We could meet after 6th. On the 4th? It's the 3rd. It's the other 2 I'm away that entire week, so we'll deal with it. Okay. The following week, though, the entire week is free because um, none of the committees have been formed yet. 
Okay, I'm just conscious of what we have left to do. We're going to have a hearing on the 6th. We will have one meeting on the 14th. We have talked about having a forum of pasts. Okay? Yeah. Well, I'm putting them all on the same same night. Same night. night. Okay. Um, and then we have to take a whole series of votes. I think we have to blitz a series of meetings in those first two weeks. I don't know how else we're going to do it. I just think we have to meet night after night after night until we finish it. And I'm also not, I, I, I missed the first two meetings, so I'm not sure if we're able to go more than the two hours each night. But if we can, I say do it. Because these little things are going to come up. Reaching consensus is not a fast process. So are you... Go ahead. I just, what you talked about, the passing a smell test, I think we're going to do that a lot to keep it moving. We have a lot of restrictions, though, on the states and on the American availability and how marathon is in. But you just said the, the week of the 9th to the, the 12th, that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. There's nothing scheduled for meetings on those dates yet because committees haven't been closed. Okay. For, um, How does that look on people's calendars if we were to do the marathon meetings? Second week of January. Yeah. Second week of Jan January and just we schedule 9 through 12. Okay. I'm just laughing. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I think this is a lot better. <laughs> okay, 9 through 12. Can you start early? 6 through 9, 6 to 9. Start five. Five, 5 to 8. <clears throat> I think after three hours we'll be get brain dead. But yeah, you want to five to nine? I would do. I'd probably prefer five to eight, but five to eight, five to eight, five to eight, January 9th, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth. Hi, Steve. You gonna move into town? I guess so. So you're saying that by the night of the twelfth, this would be ready for us to post on the agenda for the thirteenth. For, for the nineteenth. Correct, because you have to have it for the 13th. Have it on the 13th. Yeah. So you'll have a computer or something in case we're tinkering as we go, but you're going to have a. Um, we're going to meet in December too, right? One meeting in December. There's a there's a public hearing next December 6th, which is going to eat up the clock, and then December 14th. Okay. And this past meeting is going to be somewhere. The, the, the right. With the we have to figure out where we want to put that. You want to put that on the 14th, and then we have all of our hearings done. Yeah. What else would we do on the 14th? Not that. That sounds good. Yeah, that sounds good. Right. So we need to get an invite out. And then we're going to go three weeks before we meet again. Good point. Do you guys want to meet weeks. one more time? What? December 20th. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Gail. I'm leaving the 19th for the 30th. So that, that doesn't, that shouldn't decide anything for people. But I'm going to get Mary, your availability out of 14. Hey, David. Yes. So when we submit this uh, the, the draft charter to the city council, I presume we're also going to be able to provide rationale and yes. an explanation for all the points. We'll be asked to come. Probably the ordinance committee. Did. My assumption will be that the ordinance committee is sure. uh, the governing committee who would then take a look at it and probably would have to come in there and have conversations as to what we did. We did. Just do it orally? There's no written narrative that goes with it? I'm with sure the that they would take written submit. narrative if you would like to submit written narrative, but I don't think we envision written narrative other than the document itself. Okay. Things we could do. I, I don't think the timeline allows for it, to be candid. Um, I'd be more conscious that trying to rush a written narrative in there as well as a complete charter rewrite could lead to problems. And your vision is a literal <clears throat> rewrite, not a bunch of bullet points? I would suggest that since we have the boilerplate to start with, it pulls things out that we need to pull out, and we'll be just adding those points, might be the better way to go. And I have, I have, I have said to, to, to people, uh, not here, but uh, elsewhere, that I don't, I, we can have this kicked to a committee of the city council. Because uh, what will happen is we go through the whole thing with the committee, and you've got to do the whole thing again for the, for the so I, I suggest it goes to the committee of the whole. 
Okay. And again, so that, that be done twice. That the internal council and the new council make up with the new president, and, and they'll have right. to sort that out. That's above our pay grade. Right. We have a timeline of December 19th, which I'm trying to be respectful of. Um, and they gave us this timeline, and we have been meeting fairly regularly. I think we've taken a real long time off here. So since they enacted us to when we produce a document, Mark. The only reason why I was thinking that a narrative might be helpful, and I recognize, and I understand we're talking about the time constraint, is that if the city council is going to have the opportunity to tinker with this, that you know we really should be able to make our case. That, no, this is why we have made we have these deliberations. This is why we feel that the course we took is the appropriate one for the city, and not to be subject. I mean, politics may ultimately prevail here, but if there's a way that we could get this, as, you know, we could stipulate our reasons. You know, in something that would go along with the document, and that would be part of a public record as well. But that would give a little more strength, a little more heft, and make it a little more difficult for the city council just to brush it aside. I agree. Timeline. Okay. I, I, I in, in the best possible world, it would be nice to put a narrative with that that we'd be able to, to defend our decisions. I think the best we can hope for is to speak at their forums as to why we did what we did. Why did we do what we did? We're going to have to say that verbally. I think try to put that in writing and to get a committee of uh, nine people uh, vetting every word and every sentence and every whatever, I think is going to be problematic in the short time period we have. Um, the committee or as a whole, hopefully, um, the city council when they're meeting to talk about this, they will publish what sections are going to be talking about ahead of time. And before then, we could put together something in writing, but just maybe not by January 19th. But if you do it, Correct. We prepare like we're preparing for the forums that we're doing. Could I agree with you. Because I agree that's something we're writing this. Is that, okay, I mean, do we dissolve on the 19th? I think that um, it's probably, it's probably not, uh, is the order, is the order on the, the order? I think the, the order, I wrote the order that said <laughs> we dissolve. I don't know if that piece got in. <laughs> Because it sounded too, I think, you know, it sounded kind of um, uh, too um, strict, but I, I think that's why David Michael thought he took it out. Because it's, he didn't like it. It wasn't polite, you know. But when you start, when you, when you, when you uh, form a committee, you should give it an Upon submission of the draft special act charter to the city council, the special act charter drafting committee shall be dissolved. So go. we have to send it to the city council by January 19th. Could, um, could the narrative take the form of, if not a press release, I think um, uh, the points that Mark and Meg make are really important if we're going to try to frame and lock the city council, you know, and if, we're, if we make any changes, it'll put a little pressure on them, and um, a narrative, whatever form it takes, would help the press sort of frame the issue for the, for the broader public. Is that? I, go ahead. Yeah. This is just a suggestion, and I don't know if it's workable. What would happen if on all the big issues, the ones that we want to have our reasons for in front of the council, that we divide up to write you know, a one-page narrative on each of those issues and present it um, at one of our marathon meetings? And if there's a rapid agreement that what we have in front of us is good enough to present as our narrative, we use it. And if there's not a rapid agreement, it has to go without narrative. You know, we just a ch take a chance that we might be able to do it, but divide up the work so it's not falling on everything. Again, I'm not opposed. I'm just trying to figure out what can be. You guys are going to be all here for four nights in a row for 15 hours, 20, 12 hours, 12, 15 hours. When else are you going to have time to write? Just, just to, to kind of play devil's advocate here, when are you going to write that and have it ready for that Friday? Well, there will be a week in between the well, marathon meeting. Well, on day one, we do, cert we do a set of topics. On day one, somebody goes off to write that for to present it on day two and say yes. I, I, you know, I don't, I don't know. Steve, do you think it's going to take 15 hours? Are we setting aside this time because it's available? We could lock Mary uh, that's into my next, That's going to be my next question. I'm not sure you're as behind as you think you are. Okay. Yeah. I think you're being overly cautious here. I mean, I, you know, I've been sitting here and I've observed the, the, the group, and I don't see a lot of 
conflict uh, that on, on at least some issues that we've discussed. Now, granted, we haven't made any, any we haven't made any concrete decisions, but I didn't sense that there was going to be a lot of, you know, disagreement. Um, so this may go faster than you think. And I also take Megan's point that we have to have the charter ready to be submitted. We don't necessarily have to have our specific points ready. We have another whole week to have the points ready. You it's might want to just do a couple of them. technically hand me all of those points, like the day of the 19th, and I right. could attach them to what right. the counselors have already. You know, so. if they could get your document on the 13th with their packet, but they could get the explanations as late as the 19th. Right. So that's a good point that Megan made. So I, I, I surrender that there seems to be a will to have more of a narrative there. I just want to make sure, and I appreciate that Gail will be suggesting that we take a piece of it. Yeah. But just David, in answer to your question about the week of December 19th, yes, um, I'm available the 19th. The 20th, I think we could get a room after 6 p.m. and 21st and 22nd. But that is um, that Friday City Hall's closed and people are going obviously away for holidays and whatnot. But there are those days too. What is your availability on the 17th of June? Myself? Yes. Yeah. So. It's a Saturday? January. January. Oh, Tuesday. Or Wednesday, 17th of the 18th. Those are open right now. Is, is the idea that we're going to wait till the a week in January to make all the decisions? Do all the decision making during that marathon week? Start on Monday and Whatever run through finish, it. We finish. So why would we need to have a meeting on the 17th, 18th of December? Is there an agenda? Let me, item? let me get back to that. The concept, going back to Megan's point about that we all then could meet and go over the narratives, as Gail suggested, to, to veto that, that that would be the 17th or the 18th that we would have to have that meeting. You would be writing on the, the 13th, 14th, 15th weekend, 16th weekend, the 17th and 18th, we'd have one of those days where we'd pick up and just say, I agree with these bullet points of this narrative. And so people, I just want to start saving dates so we have. You're talking about January now. I'm sorry. January. I thought you were talking about now December. So I want to hold off on that. <laughs> January. They still, the narrative is really only meant to say this is why we came to the decision of the charter. Right. It's not I, something where there would be at that point opposition to what we write in the narrative because it will already it will just be chronicling what you know the reasons why we came to the decision we did. It shouldn't be something the controversy should be in the earlier decision about what should be in the draft charter. I think, I think yeah. we need to have the same conclusion yeah. in different ways. So also what you put on paper that can be public not, it's not, I mean, you have two audiences there. One is city council. We want you to stick to what we do. But the other is the public. Do you agree with the rationale? I, I think the narrative is, is, is far more complicated than, than just 17th or 18th. Pick a day, folks. 18th is Wednesday, so we've been having our meetings on the way Wednesdays. That would be the day before. That makes me a little nervous. That's why I was put the 17th out there. Let's do this. I'm the 17th. Okay, you're locked into January 17th will be also a meeting date in this room at 6 o'clock. Mary, you'll check that for us? Yes. <laughs> I love that glazed over look. <laughs> no, no, I was thinking we just, um, we talked about 9, 10, 11, 12 at 5 to 8, but do you want a 6? Okay, do you want to do 5 to 8 again? Yeah. 5 to 8, the 17th. Okay. Just to give everybody comfort level, we probably won't be I know. <laughs> I know. But I just I want to lock them in so one they meet the public meeting notice piece. We can cancel meetings, that's not a problem. But also this is a very complicated group with, with meetings. Now, jumping back to your point, which was a December meeting after the 14th. If we have the forum on the 14th, we're inviting people to uh, share with us. Mary, what's your availability on the 13th? That's open. I'm out of town that day. Okay. 14th? Okay.
can we expand the hours of the meeting on the 14th to also be 5 to 8? Does that work for people? Yeah. We could do a little bit of business between 5 and 6, ask the people to come in at 6 o'clock, and then the meeting might go a little bit longer. Is that okay? 6 o'clock we would ask the, I, Davey Santi's not in, in this part of the world at the moment, he's over in California, so I don't think he'd be coming, but we'd send out a formal invitation to past city council presidents, past vice chairs of the school committee, and past mayors to join us in a forum for discussion on this topic. Does that work for everybody? I'm not inviting rank and file school committee or rank and file city council, just the chairs to understand the leadership um, issues. While you're on that topic, the 6th is the next meeting and that's your forum. Do you, what do you want on the 14th for the agenda? That's what we're, that's this, yeah. but we'll, yeah. I was just going to ask if we could invite people for five and have our meeting the last hour because it might be possible after we hear from everybody on that panel to do some kind of a straw vote and really organize ourselves around what we do agree on, what we don't agree on, we can get a jump on some of this right after Stop. we listen from, to them. Okay. Is that, I don't know. So how does it come at 5 o'clock? Yeah. Makes sense to me. Okay, I'm, I'm comfortable with that too if people are there. All right, I'll drop a letter that I'll work with Mary about getting it out to those, it's about 10 or 12 people by my quick calculation. Uh, that would need to be invited. Have it come for 5 p.m. on December 14th. Okay. And then there would be sort of a round table discussion on a particular issue. We'd open up the same way with a public forum. Mary, if you're coming up with the agenda. Um, so the first 15 minutes, people in the audience wanted to share topics about anything. We would then go into uh, round table, leadership round table, just to talk with people about um, the issues of chairing school committee, um, chairing city council, powers of the mayor, powers of the city council and school committee. And I also would like to put in there length of term. comfortable with that piece of the agenda. And then uh, following that segment, if we put an hour and a half or, or two hours aside for that type of thing, that last hour, as Gail suggested, would be, um, uh, help me out here, Steve, beginning of the decision-making process. How do we want to phrase that one? I need an agenda topic so it, it passes the smell test. No, no, the, 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 the it, what are we going to say that allows us to open up that conversation? You could just put an initial discussion. Okay, fine. Initial discussion of the final report, I don't know. The proposed charter. Right. Initial discussion of proposed charter. And then if you could have for that meeting, uh, your boilerplate with the areas that you've highlighted, you know, so we know what we're going to need to fill in. Yeah. That could be our homework over the holiday season. Mm -hmm. We would then meet on uh, January 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th, and work our way through all of those bullet points that need to be filled in. Mm -hmm. We would have preferably consensus as our form of decision making, but recognizing that we might need to take actual votes. Do you want to comment at those meetings, or do you want those to just be called working? I don't know. Someone shows up. Put a public comment on it. <laughs> this is... But they're basically just going to be working... It's going to be working meetings where we're going to uh, continue to work through the charter. To come to consensus, come to agreement, is the word that we should be used. And then on January 17th, we will uh, work towards uh, 
any Garrett over background or backup or defense or whatever the word is that we're coming to. Is that a game plan that people can live with? I would I would suggest that as we um, as we proceed through the the, uh, the hot topics that we as we reach consensus we sort of take notes um, uh, and outline the narrative that we want to give as we're as as we're agreeing you know, sort of bullet the, the points of agreement. I want to see people's hands go up voluntarily for different sections. Okay. <laughs> we should maybe just take the sections that we put on it as a meeting. Yeah. That works. That's okay. That works. Okay. Um, okay. Other questions? We're running a little late. I know, Tom. Not, I know you're conscious of time. General comment in terms of my dealing with this. Uh, Steve presenting this concept of a charter with uh, all these various articles and, and sections. Is it possible to present? alternatives of what some towns or cities have adopted that are different so we can s compare what we're, I mean, we're looking at it and it all sounds well and good in terms of, of what we have, but town A may have wanted, the city A may have uh, come up with one idea, city B may have come up with another idea, and then we can see what the various cities have done and it, to me, it would help me decide is this the best provision to present. So I, I guess the question is, do you, do you have alternative provisions for term limits, for how re you, there's replacements with vacancies, uh, et cetera, et cetera? I mean, what I could do is I, you know, I could email you five or six charters. But the, well, I, I was even thinking that the charters have the links to the charter because the charters are usually... They're all on the website. They're all on the website. website. So if you could find five to ten comparable towns with the link that gets you right to the charter, so then you could go and take a look at those charters. I, and, for uh, instance... Agawam, West Springfield, uh, Greenfield are three here in Western Mass that are all comparable size as, as North Hampton. And fairly new. And fairly new, that they've gone through them. And then maybe representative samples from other cities that have 30,000 people. Right. That has a charter that was written after 1880. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. That narrows it down. <laughs> and actually, if you could get us those before the public meeting, that might help to. Yeah. Okay. So if you could get us that 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 you know ten just best practice or ten charter links that we then could go in and read, um, I think that that would be helpful. Other things that we would need as we move forward in the decision making process. Coffee. Pizza. Yeah, is that um, is that allowed? Do you realize the budget is for this group? <laughs> uh, I, I'm I'm treating for. It. <laughs> uh, I think it would, obviously we can't do that for the form and the 14th would be in my word, but maybe we should think about that for those marathon for meetings, that. depending on how they roll. Um, other questions or comments to come before this body at a time. Your homework is that those four individuals are going to get these four individuals are going to get these slides by 5 p.m. on uh, Sunday. Our forum will be December 6th at 6 p.m. in City Council Chambers. It will be televised. There will be a brief, but like, here's the people introduction. I'm not going through the 19 pages that I posted on the website that we did last time. Um, Gail, I would like you to repeat your comments because it could be a different group of people. And then we move right into the four people presenting. Um, those two I prefer to kind of keep within that half hour range together. All right, so you have to figure that out. That's probably 15 minutes each. But again, I don't think either of them, that one in particular, it could be a hot topic, Rich. But we'll start with that, put it up there, see what people say. Yeah. Move into Tom's, move into Mark's. We have a half hour, then move into Gale, and um, I'll try to keep you to a half hour, even though yours might go a little longer. We will then have an extra hour of time divided into two sections, which will be any other parts of the charter that people want to talk about that were not addressed in the first eight questions, and then anything else that people want to bring up in regarding to the charter, the process, even rehashing things that came the day before. Comfortable with that? 
is a three-hour meeting. We'll be finished then uh, by 9 o'clock. Uh, we will then meet on the 14th. We will have an invite out to those people, hopefully tomorrow or the next day, that will ask them to come to be part of a roundtable discussion about the powers of the mayor, city council, school committee, and term limits. Um, we will then also have a business meeting afterwards where we will talk about moving forward on our decision-making process in the beginning of the, the charter, including some of the homework. We will then meet on the 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th of January between 5 and 8, hopefully in this room. And we will do a marathon until we finish, followed by January 17th where we'll take a look at narratives and or backup information that we want to provide. Everybody's on the same page. Motion to adjourn. Mary. 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 Can I just ask, are, are you or Mr. McGoldrick coming to the planning to come to the city council on the 19th? I would need to know that to put you on the agenda. Um, Steve will be there, and I will, and our whole committee will be there. <laughs> yes, we will all be there. <laughs> we should probably put, put representatives of this committee. And well, just what what the uh, mayor and council president would normally want me to put is um, we have a section called presentations yes. where I could put a presentation by the Chat special charter crafting Chat Chat committee. I love show show. Chair Chair you. And yes. Mr. Right. But because whoever's there, I'm going to want you to stand up and introduce yourself. So and your home phone number so people can start calling. Um, uh, seven. 15 is when it starts, but it won't be on the agenda until some point, and we'll get you that timeline. But Mary, if we could be early, so I'm not there until 11 or 12. I know, but we're special. It says that in our group. We're special. You know, actually, once you present it, you're dissolved, so. Right. We're still special. That's okay. As soon as we can re dissolve, that works for me too. All that is melting. Quick question. Uh, is it safe to tell press about the 14th? Yes. We're going to have that meeting, Illinois Water, if someone so can't come, too bad, we're having that meeting. That's correct. We're, we're inviting some of the uh, past leadership of, uh, past and current leadership of Northampton mm -hmm. to uh, offer their opinions on these issues. That's totally legitimate, but you know, we've asked the public to come in and weigh in on their opinions, and now I'd like to hear from the people who ran the city during the last 20 years about what they think needs to be changed within the charter. Okay, other issues? Mary, thanks for hanging in. You've had a hell of a day. Everybody else, thanks for being here. We will see you on December 6th at 6 o'clock at City Council. I'm going to ask you to be a little early just because I'm just obsessive.